Hello, welcome back to the Unified Unified um, Gaming event by Sporting Kansas City. And we have Wish here, the overall series MVP. And we're going to be asking him just a couple of questions about the series that just happened, this crazy five-map series that just happened. And um, thank you, Wish, for joining us. And how are you today? Uh, I'm very good. Really happy that I just won. That's great. That's actually great. You guys, that was a very stressful series. I imagine it was stressful yeah. to you. And, you know, one of the questions that I wanted to start you out with was definitely like, how did it feel to be at LANs again? How does it feel to be just in person, being able to play games with your teammates? It feels like really well to see all my teammates again and that how everything hits instant. It's a very different experience rather than playing on ping. Oh, uh, yeah. The ping, the ping difference is always fun, especially <laughs> when you play in a team across the country. Yeah. <laughs> And another thing that I also wanted to ask you, this was a, obviously a five-map series, and they put up a heck of a fight. Um, one of the questions I had for you is, obviously, what were some of the adjustments that you personally want, made against some of their players? Obviously, you know, you have a couple of their players who were com just completely taking over some of the maps, like on Anubis. Mm -hmm. um, you had their Hanzo just completely take over the game. Mm -hmm. Um, but what were some of the adjustments that you personally made? So how we adjusted, we'd basically, like, watch how they play. We'd see what their comp is. But we'd have to like adjust, like fall back. If they're playing too aggro, we had this go in. When they're playing too soft or you see someone split, we just have to really look at what they're doing to adjust. Awesome. I imagine you, you're obviously, obviously your coaching and everything like that definitely helped. Coach talking in your ear, actually having them there in person. <laughs> And another question that I had for you, something I didn't see from you very often. You you played quite a few heroes throughout the entire map, but the final map, you did pull out that Doomfist. What kind of influenced that decision for Oasis? So they have Doomfist as well, and Doomfist is also really good on that map. And we have a thing called inting, and to int is to like <laughs> go in and try to like try to try to just get, do things. Uh, I've been there way too many times. <laughs> <laughs> And obviously, like, another hero that you definitely pulled out earlier on uh, on Rialto, you guys decided to switch it over to Farah, and that paid off in spades. Uh -huh. And went also influenced that decision, you know, facing the Hanzo and the McCree from them, um, they you were able to pick out the Farah. What kind of influenced the pick onto the Farah, especially changing it to the pharmacy? Seeing all the, the high buildings and all the, like, differently shaped rooftops, it's very easy to, like, sit on top of that on Farah and avoid shots, so it's easy to get spam out while doing that as well. Yeah, and, you know, obviously this is your first, um, this is your first land event in a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, what would you say your favorite, uh, favorite moment this weekend has been, maybe besides winning the game five? <laughs> Honestly, I'd say meeting the players, meeting all the different players. Mm -hmm. You got any uh, favorite players on enemy teams? Uh, they're Doom player. They're Doom player that we just played against. He was, really, he was really good. Right. And we do have just one last question for you. If you had to shout out anyone here on stream, who would you want to shout out? Uh, I shout out Hanvan. He's <laughs> really good at support. 
Awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us for the interview. Congratulations on your championship win. Thank you very much. Thank you. Welcome back to Unified Sport in Kansas City, and we currently have the coach of the recent winning team for the Overwatch Grand Finals, and welcome in. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, so you having a good day so far? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I, smiles across the whole team's faces and mine as well. Uh, brought my wife along, and actually, uh, we had like our district here for our, our high school, uh, tons of support staff. Uh, throughout our school district so it was the game to win especially in a game five series that was exciting oh it couldn't have been more stressful right <laughs> exactly right <laughs> so you know obviously coming out here bringing out a lot of support it seems like how does it feel to be at lands again uh it's unbelievable this is our first LAN um that we've done as an esports organization we've been an organization for a little bit over a year we started last year in march mm -hmm. and some of the players i am seeing their face for the first time having uh, you know, coach them for over a year. I mean, I've seen pictures, but uh, this is the first <laughs> time I've actually met one of the players face to face. So um, it's a really, really cool experience and uh, one that would be very memorable for everybody. 
Oh, most definitely. And I mean, video chat is a lot different than right. seeing them in person. <laughs> right. Especially when they're taller than you. You're just like, oh. Oh, yeah. One of the players, uh, uh, Anderson, He uh, he's <laughs> he's tiny. I thought he was like as tall as me. He's, you know, so the, you forget that they're high school kids and uh and seeing them up against the college age kids was uh was pretty daunting at first but they they pulled it out most definitely age age doesn't doesn't dictate skill right right and you as a coach obviously this map this this series went to five games Mm -hmm. what kind of adjustments did you let your players or tell your players to make during throughout the series because i mean on a map like anubis you had velzed completely take over on that hanzo which Obviously, he was able to take these just weird angles that you can't really expect. So Vel, uh, we had nightmares about Vel. So <laughs> shout out to Vel. He is a very skilled player. Um, we played this team yesterday, um, and we spent all night talking about how to to beat him. And uh, it, it our plan that we came in with didn't work. So the players actually made really good adjustments. Um, and we knew Vel was going to be a huge threat. We tried to prioritize Vel, and he knew that we were going to do that. And he's a really good player. So I, uh, it was it was interesting. We didn't know his Hanzo game was as strong as it was. We were expecting him to be on Doom. Um, so it, it was it was an amazingly entertaining, amazingly brilliant performance by the by the high school team. So you gotta gotta you know. Hide the trade secret sometimes. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but another question for you. Obviously, throughout this entire series, this being your your team's first LAN event, what was your favorite portion of the weekend so far, besides obviously winning the game five? Uh, the venue is amazing. This is great. I mean, all the decorations, the cosplay, the gifts, the um, other players, the conversation. Uh, we had district members uh, come in for a luncheon. Um, got to see Ramsey again. Like everything was really cool. Everybody was really nice. Um, if you haven't gone to one of these, it is insanely cool. It's a full experience. Even if I didn't even play any games, I loved the game, and there were tons of games around. I was thoroughly entertained. I just realized I hadn't played anything. So I mean, it, there's something for everybody. And I think our final question would be: You obviously, as a coach and this team what is the plan next for this team so um scholarships have been plentiful for the seniors that are on the teams uh and colleges are are really looking at some of our players that are now going into their senior year and um i'm gonna lean on those seniors to develop the next generation of esports players at our school and in our district and um this is this is a great highlight for them to share with them to show them the possibilities of what gaming can do for for high school students so Exactly. And always got to support high school and college esports. It's only getting bigger from here. Yep, absolutely. Southeast WSU. Let's go. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you very much for joining us for this interview. And absolutely. Good luck from here on out. And hopefully we get to see you again, maybe on bigger stages. That's right. Wichita, at the, the next event, we're going to be there. That's our home turf. So you guys better bring it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much.
And we are back. We are here with some League of Legends action. Overwatch went to five games. It was freaking ridiculous, I have to say. And I mean, it not only went down to game five, it went down to the round three. It was phenomenal to see. But now we are back with some League of Legends action. I am Orbital, joined here by Random Minion Castle. Again, flying all the way in from Canada. It's going to be great. We have the third place matchup here today. Arc Esports coming out, I believe, against Grid Esports, and we're going to have a great time. The Grid Esports, I'm very, very sorry. I will put some emphasis on that V, and we are now into the draft again. Best of three, keep that in mind. First band's coming out, Viego, Silas, and it looks like a Rumble band on the other side. Caitlyn Thresh just don't want to deal with that bottom lane. And this was actually our first match yesterday as well. And it was Park on the blue side, Grid on the red side. So the more things change, the more they stay the same. The bands are, are different. Diego getting banned this time. Last time, the grid got both Diego and Silas here, and that was kind of one of the big reasons why they ran away with that game. Yeah, it really did. And again, it, and that's the thing. It's a learning experience, right? Testing the waters, making sure you understand exactly how to deal with these. And if you didn't learn from the game before, that's where you start having some of those issues. So we'll see how it goes against Justana is picked up. The last man was Morgana. So it means pretty much any ADC is open range. Here, the Draven following up next. I, I, do, I really don't know what it is with the Draven, but I'm loving it. It was actually the first bat yesterday, too. Draven with set. Now, this is a potential bot lane we can see. Uh, it's really good into a Tristana and trying to make sure that Tristana doesn't get aggressive. Because if she ever hops in, you just grab her, and suddenly Draven just gets free access here. And Nivea being picked up. This was what Macarena played yesterday. And I know that you over play Anivia, I play Anivia. We're both hoping for Anivia pop off game. Didn't quite work here, but you know, you know with the Silas ban this time, Catamatics has to pull something different out to deal with that frozen bird. Yeah, and I mean, there are multiple ways. There is a reason, but I will say Macarena has had some decent zone control. Uh, mid to late games in a lot of those fights, there have been points where you actually take a look and you're like, hey, the zoning is good. The understanding of how to lay the walls with the Glacial Storm has created opportunities. It's just the opportunities were not uh, to be capitalized on that point. So let's see if Park Eastwoods have picked it up and seen and kind of refine their ways here. However, on the other side, Gritty Sports are just like, cool, we did this before, let's do it again. They had the face breaker in the top side, plus the Guardian of Sun here. Phenomenal picks to come out, a lot of CC. And is gonna have a bad time. Yeah, and I think we saw it earlier today already, I believe it was uh, Tai Chi and possibly playing with the Leona Draven where we got the uh, AP carry Leona and Draven support coming out. Uh, but I, I like the duo, I like it again in here. It is going to be a much closer matchup against that Nautilus Tristana because Tristana's early game damage with the explosive shot can match Draven and a lot of it will come down to which support gets the better engage, who can actually stop the AD carries from auto attack in here. The band's coming out real quick. Kale and Sidrani instantly taking taken out. They don't want Xerix. They don't want Goon on this Sidrani here. And Graves Victor being taken out by Park Esports. We've not seen a single Victor so far here. So perhaps, you know, the team's found out something after yesterday here, a bit of a targeted ban towards Catamatics. And it's also, uh, you know, in relatively form to the uh, to the champion, right? Victor is another champion that can hard poke out the Anivian senses. This is one of the OG pre-level six champions that just rain hell. Uh, personally, if I'm going up against Anivia, it is for me, Syndra, Zareth, and uh, Syndra, Zareth, Vagar, and um, I would say Victor. Those three are great. No, 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 please, please, do it. Do it. yes, yes. <laughs> Okay, for, for those of you who don't know, Orbital is a Vigar main. And actually, uh, my name, Random Minion Caster, came about because I used to play Vigar, and my teammates would say that I'm basically a glorified Caster Minion. So both of us are extremely happy that we're seeing Vigar into this game here. Press R, zero counterplay. It, it's in, it's locked in. Park Esports, they, they pick a Camille. Doesn't matter. It's not going to be able to stop a Vigar. I don't care what you pick at this point. <laughs> that Vigar is going to be killing some, be bodying some fools. This is even better than if we got Return of the Middle Six on Middle Six. Uh, okay, okay, I take that back. Whoa, whoa, maybe whoa. not, oh, maybe not. That's, that's a bit That's far. a whole team <laughs> aspect right there. Uh, you know, but honestly, I'm so excited. I love Vagar, and this is this is the best part if you want to hear this. Me and Random Mincaster have two different ways of saying the name. So in the comments, please let us know which way we are supposed to say it, uh, and, and we'll get back to you later about that. Anyway, on the flip side, we do have the Camille and the Zach. And Zach, I think this is... 
I want to say one of the best switchups you can have because Zac is probably the premier and simplistic yet effective jungling and ganking. This is a champion that is well known to execute from literally anywhere on the map with a slingshot, so it does very, very well. However, to counter that, to not be taken out, the Kindred is locked in that will most likely be going into the jungle, and we'll have to wait and see if it actually pans out. Both teams locking in significantly different team compositions. And I'm very surprised at Orbital because Shin Sao went all the way through. We saw the Shin Sao hover from Cubsy there, and they just did not pick it at the end of the day. It's such a strong early game champion, and Zach and Kindred aren't exactly early game champions. Zach has great gank paths, don't get me wrong, and with the gank assist from all the lanes, the CC coming from the Nautilus, from the Anivia, Camille having the damage as well and the ability to follow up, it's a great champion, but it's not going to be able to take over the game the same way. And for Grid Esports here, taking that Kindred, I'm a little bit scared of it. Because you've got a Draven, because you've got the Vigar here, you have a lot of burst damage, and Kindred can backfire. I know the joke is, I'm Jarvan and I'm helping. <laughs> but that applies to Kindred as well. If you pop that Lance Respite at the wrong place at the wrong time, your team is not going to be happy. You don't have a ton of displacements either to move people out of it. it feels like a very risky pick here. Yeah, it does. And uh, it, it's along the lines of Bard. It's along the lines of just, you know, yeah, trying to help out, trying to make sure. But I do think it is a solid pickup at some point, right? You know that the Camille's coming in. You know that Chisana can have some burst if they scale up. As well as it's one of the few that could probably duel in the jungle fairly well against a Zac. The shredding potential that you have is very necessary to get through the early tankiness. And remember, you have to get through a few pieces of Zac, namely four others. Namely four others. Uh, it is hard if you don't have that auto attack pathing and, and a little bit of clearance in the early stages so i can understand where it's coming from but yes the backfiring it is going to be crucial to watch that standing now taking a look at these compositions mid to late game one of our question marks for park has been that the early game is a little bit on the weaker side they're trying to refine it and again i think the zach is the number however where is the zach going to go multiple lane options and maybe uh, some early aggression from the jungler, where do you think this act should be roaming and ganking to? I think unfortunately for Park Esports, they're in a similar situation once again here where they're not uh, necessarily in the best of positions in the early game. Your Tristana Nautilus is a great bot lane, but at the same time, your Camille's probably not gonna be winning against set early. Your Anivia needs time to scale. Against Vigar, you do have some kill threat though, so maybe we see some attention mid bot lane here. And other than that, again, they're still looking to just scale up towards those later team fights towards those big 5v5s. Uh, for the great esports, Draven Leona. We already talked about how that ball lane is going to be fairly volatile. That is definitely somewhere to look. And even if they don't necessarily take over the lane, they will still have the ability to roam out quite quickly, shove the wave out quite uh, quite quickly as well if they do see that Tristana not always leave lane. Top side, it's to your advantage here. Set does pretty well into the Camille early on. Mid lane, Vigar also has a lot of kill threat onto this Anivia. In fact, I'd say it has more kill threat onto this Anivia. So, same thing as Park Esports here. I want to see that Kindred taking advantage of the stronger mid bot lanes playing around that side. But I'm not expecting to see quite as many ganks just because Kindred isn't the best at ganking. And yeah. the lane assist is somewhat... Um, it's there, but it's not as reliable. Yeah, not as reliable as a literal sack of goo just coming in, making sure, like, out of Fog of War, I swear, it's always out of Fog of War. You try and put down five words, it's not going to happen. So we'll see if that works, but we'll see how Park Esports are able to play it. We'll see if that 03 setting has no bearing. You have to get over that mental hump if you want to be a challenger. Remember, it is a best of three. You lose this one, you have one more chance. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the first game of the third play series between Park Esports and the Grid Esports.
And we are back with what is uh, the fifth and sixth part of our nature documentary. Please direct your attention over to Red Side Walls. We now have the final lizard that I think we have found. Oh, oh be quiet. Oh, 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 okay. It's a hunter. Run away, run away. And we have, we do have a wolf that is uh, somehow very, very floaty. No legs. No legs is weird. Anyway, we are here with game number one of Park and Grid, of course. Uh, these two teams, of course, playing fourth and third very excited to see what they can bring here to the table as they have had some fantastic picks and of course the uh vegar vigar very sorry uh coming out here and we are going to enjoy some awesome hopefully awesome league of legends C considering orbital that you just uh, said that we're gonna see a lizard and then you showed us a wolf i'm a bit uh, sus on your pronunciation of <laughs> what did you call him vigar <laughs> yes 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 uh well i i may say uh, I, I don't want to say any of the other terms, but yes, I think we have confirmed <laughs> at this point it is Vigar. Uh, it, it's very entertaining, and and it's been it's been a great time. And <laughs> honestly, for me, seeing uh, that champion come out, I'm just gonna call it that champion now because uh, I'm gonna make fun of him. No, uh, Catamax, of course, bringing out this champion, and in a situation where it actually synergizes very very well, you have so much CC lined up. The combinations I feel are endless. Yeah, I mean, the CC2 is going to feel rather endless for a lot of these champions. And I'm a little bit scared to see Anathema's chains come out on anybody here, because uh, uh, technically, with Morgana, there's zero tenacity. You can chain CC somebody for eternity. Now, you've got a Vigar, you've got a Leona. Both of them are also infamous for uh, endless CC here coming through. Uh, Anivia, kind of similar in terms of that. So a lot of potential here for that particular item. But I want to talk about the teams right now. Orbital. The fact that this is probably the most standard compositions we're seeing come up against each other. There's no Shintel, there's no Viego, there's no Silas. And this is the most meta we've seen both these teams play. I think that says a lot about how they've played and maybe a little bit about how we can expect them to play this game. I even want to say, I, I think this is the first time I've seen Ryze go play an ADC. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, a majority of his time has been played on either mages or melee fighters, so... Uh, I, I love the adaptation and again trying stuff out. Maybe they were hiding their picks and maybe this is the signature. Yeah, potentially here. I don't remember all the picks. I just remember the Seraphine from the game one when they played against Grid here. But that's it, bot side. We do see a little bit of trading already happening there. And it seems to be favoring the Leona Draven a little bit. I mean, they did hit level two first, but weren't quite able to punish immediately there. Goon though. Looking down into this bot side, and we sit with the fact that you can never quite see the Zac coming. You got a ward very, very deep here. Charles looking to invade because Charles definitely can't dive this game. Can't do that. Uh, if if they pulled it off, that would be the play of the century, I think. Uh, being able to somehow uh, gank a Camille under tower, but no, they're just waiting. Oh, and the 50 50 does pay off. That is one of the things with Kindred that is a little bit rough at the start. You guess which of the marks will come up, and Charles has very good gambler's intuition. I don't know if that was a 50 50. Catamatix was already down there guarding the bottom one as well. And we're talking about the fact that Constant Support and Cubsy, they were shoving out their bot lane. They had the better trading. They made sure that, irregardless of which way the coin flipped, Charles would have protection and would be able to secure the scuttle. So really well played from the grid esports here. And they aren't really losing much to do it. They're still up ahead in CS in every lane except for the top lane right now. We've seen this kind of play out uh, before. The Camille has had some presence, but you do see that walk through. And of course, the sweeper from Charles is able to note the fact that, hey, I was spotted out. Don't really want to test this because considering the amount of CC and damage that could come out from a Zac, a Tristana, and a Nautilus, I think it's a fair assumption to say, hey, maybe don't put two ADCs, squishy ADCs, on that front line. Goon has successfully snuck into the bush here. Charles just based as well, so Park should know they're okay to do this in constant support. He's shoving this, trying to keep those axes going. Yeah, he has to, and he's going to have to auto-attack, and... I, I think he's still waiting. Again, the bait is there, but the recall has been oh. made. So unfortunately, a little bit of time wasted, but it is time spent on both sides. Remember, both junglers did decide to spend their time. It just means that Goon will have about 30 seconds lag behind. I was honestly surprised that Goon did just go for it. If you're going to base after this anyways, you might as well just chuck a gank in, right? Even if you don't get a kill, maybe you blow a flash, maybe you blow a heal. You can soak up an ignite as well. Just something to have happen, because as a Zac, 
you, you're not there to power farm the game. You're there to get some ganks off. And if it does come down to a power farming contest, the Kindred will outskill you as well. So bit of a missed opportunity. We'll see if they can make something happen somewhere else. Top side right now, pushing away from Xerix uh, towards the side of Grid Esports and mid lane as well. Catamatic's about to base. So no real gank path on the top side. You're just kind of clearing your jungle, making sure you remove the marks and Charles doesn't get to get in to pick them up himself. Why'd you have to show him getting eaten? That was that was sad. I, I love my <laughs> sweet, sweet Vigar. Uh, favorite skin of his, though. Favorite skin of his, though. I, I have to ask you this. This determines if you're a true Vigar main or not. Which one's your favorite? Battle boss. No, we're not talking anymore. No. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I my personal favorite has to be a uh, bad Santa Vigar. Uh, solely because... Well, okay, Fury Huron is now up there, too. So, um, But a lot... Lots of really good skin selection, but uh, mm. something we will definitely have to keep track of. Uh, <laughs> it is going to okay. be a good time, and uh, it looks like even the producer is agreeing with me on that point. I'm trying to pronounce it differently, but we'll see the first gank of the game goes on to the enemy jungle. Charles is going to have to run away a little bit, but they're calling an mm -hmm. early teleport, and they're going to go nice. in. That just might be it. Rise go. Ooh. One more axe, but the piercing arrow is going to take it. Not piercing arrow, but just an arrow from Charles will snap up that first blood. Well played from the Grid Esports. And I do want to note the movements of the mid laners here. Both of them did come down. Neither of them participated, but Catamatic's blue teleport to get down there while Macarena literally just walked. So again, that teleport discrepancy. Yesterday, we didn't see Macarena really use that teleport to very much use at all. So hopefully this game, I want to see that teleport being used a little bit more proactively, trying to make something happen here with it. Or even if it's just for lane dominance, burn all your mana, burn your health, trade and TP right back to it. How to utilize that teleport, but I will say a step up is Macarena actually rotating for some of these fights. Before we saw Macarena kind of focus just on farming, which I think is great on some of these scaling champions. But you have to work with the team, right? Sacrifice the good of an individual for the rest of the team, and that shows great progress already in my book. Something that I also want to keep track of is catamatic stacks, right? Everyone knows it has to be farmed up appropriately. If you're not, you're not a Vigar main or Vigar fairy, sorry now. Um, and I, I want to keep track. So we are currently sitting at 32, which is respectable if you're just power farming. Uh, and I'm also interested to see the build that, uh, that catamatics goes, right? It is the uh, comet coming out, not something like the electrocute. Yeah, and, and right now, the sort of standard for Vegas for the most part is going to be that Everfrost for more CC, uh, better engage as well. Bot side, really good engage coming through, comes in. Yeah, and able to actually body oh block Marco, and that was perfection. A little bit too close to the tower, though. You were within auto attack range, 100%, and uh, they chose not to, which is kind of funny, but still. Kill going over to the Draven, also on part early, and I think that was a well-placed kill. Yeah, and the fat Cubs, he just no fear going in immediately there. They went for the support. And generally, you know, in the bot lane, you're thinking, okay, we'll go for the squish here, carry. It doesn't matter when you've got Leona Draven here. If Tristana's not immediately ready to return the damage, you can go in on that Nautilus. And he doesn't really have a great escape top side, which seeing trades come through great sidestep from Zarek there. Oh, but the follow up is there. And once again, they go oh. ahead. Single speed up, only going to seal his death. He's Phantom. We'll go ahead and pick up his first skill of the game. Macarena once again trying to transit, trying to back up the lane, is not going to get there in time. And this is what we talked about with Park Esports, the fact they do tend to lose their early game. We're at nine minutes, they're only down two and a half thousand gold here. And when that second Drake comes up in just under three minutes... Oh, oh. Well, old Dragon Unbecoming, that's just a straight yeah. bot lane tower dive that kind of working. Constance is able to pick up another kill, so that's two. But the follow-up deaths might not be worth it. That's going to be one given over to Rarko. Follow-up from Xerix, so two taken out. Still, gold income going the way of Constant. Meanwhile, topside East Phantom is going to get a lot of time with this tower. Yeah, the fact that Xerix died and then had to teleport bot lane min means that they miss multiple waves in the top lane. East Phantom gets to shove it and get a whole bunch of plates as well. And sure, it's good. It's great that you got Xerix a kill. Uh, but Rarko got the other one, as you mentioned. That's not ideal. Oh, no, it is not. I don't think Rarko is currently oh, marked. No that is gosh. still a death. A lot of gold and it's a tent. So Goon tried to make a play, but not going to have it happen. Lamb's dress is still available. And now they might have found Macarena here. Uh, that's going to be okay. Event Horizon, not going to catch anyone on the edge. But uh, so far, it is it is uh, highly refreshing 
to see Macarena trying to move for the team, trying to make mobility usage. And I think um, that might come into play later. I'm very, very interested to see what happens. But again, one spinning X constant straight up says, get out of the lane. I'm a little bit worried. Oh, okay. Bye bye, Macarena. Are they going to? No. Oh. Yeah, it's the egg. You, you always have to worry. Remember, if there are feathers around their levels, they're still alive. So that's going to be Macarena reviving here. I think this is actually. Remind me if I'm wrong here, but I think these are the only two champions that do have an innate revive ability. Is that correct? Zach and Nivia. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, Zillion's got an active revive. Echo, yes. mm, Echo's got a time break. Um, yeah, I mean, Karthus got it after. Well, technically, Sion, and Sion, depending on how you want to cut it there. He does come yeah. back. I mean, he's still technically dead after the duration. Um, unless you hit the Mundo bug. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hit them in the back. Oh dear, oh dear, no. Uh, I, I think those are two, and I, and it's something that has to be said is it's it's good to see that you try and utilize utilize those capabilities because uh, this is pretty good, I would say. Uh, trying to keep yourself alive and Macarena being able to stay alive as well. Looking like it is going to be towards that Leandri's build, which is the general burn build for that. Um, but again, question marks all around. Grid so far finding their advantages where they can and going. For that first rift, Herald should be able to open up either top or mid. Yeah, and not only are they going to be able to get this Herald when Dragon spawns in 10 seconds here, they've got advantages all across the place. There's no more revive for the Anivia available. Rauko might be dead by the time it comes up. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. the turnaround, though. Oh, and that is so crucial. That was the Kill Park Esports coming out with a silly, silly oh, the day. Oh, this, you don't see this very oh. often. The shield again. No, is he going to get away? <laughs> is he going to get astronaut in the top lane too they make the play all right park esports absolutely showing up here in game one. Oh no 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 he, he didn't die he never died he was able to survive and he's only sleeping yeah yeah you know what we, we count that as a win for rarko you had to call in an extra tp from catamatics that's not fair uh <laughs> it, it should have been a win for rarko on that deadly ring around the rosy okay rizgo barely getting out but that will be the turret going down and grid. They got the dragon while that was happening. They get first turret as well. And sure, Rarko might have bought time and lived a bit longer, but you're still falling apart a little bit on this bot's head. Remember, this is just game one. You start things off. Oh, the event horizon. Perfect right there to secure all three. And my gosh, that is the Vagar difference right there. Just uh, one of the few abilities that actually stops, charges, leaps, dashes. One of the very few that physically stuns them out of it. Yeah, the baby cage, they're really going to mess up the Zac trying to engage and can actually mess up the Nautilus and the Camille as well. So a lot of use for it if you can get set up. And right now, it's looking like the Gritty Esports should be able to get at every objective first and deny entrance. But for the Park Esports as well, I mean, you've got an Anivia. If you get to a place first and you've got vision, your wall, especially if you put, you know, two, three ranks into it early, can cut off an entire ramp. So park esports have ways of coming back in and a lot of it revolves very heavily around trying to find a pick trying to get a catch trying to use all that cc that you've got in your kits well two dragons are down we weren't really able to mention it too much that is going to be the mountain soul coming out so just like he said we only get two infernals and that's going to be it so now we get mountain probably going to be wind in the next series and again i'll be interested to see how that one plays out so far gold still Heavily in favor of Grid right now. Those tower plates and one tower fully is in their favor. 14 minutes here. Going to be falling out the rest of the plates. And Rygo, Rysgo has now been placed in the mid lane to try and soak up this XP. Yeah, Rysgo actually picking up the first mythic of the game, the Kraken Slayer here. So there is an opportunity here where constant support and Cubsy don't actually want to go in on Rarko and Rizgo right now. They need to go back and buy first. And if you look at the lane assignments, they've actually moved the e-mobile mid laners down to this bot lane here. So there's a lot of gank potential. Again, still no revive on Macarena. And Vigar is great offensively. We talked a lot about the defensive use of the event horizon. But if you're ganking that Vigar, the burst damage that can come up between a Zac and a Nivea should be able to kill him in the long lane. Yeah, and, and it does make me sad. I miss the days of, I think it is the uh, the Glacial Augment days. With the Twin Shadows plus Everfrost, it caused so much chaos with the Vigar. And, and it was just absolutely rude. It was one of the meanest things because it turned into a Morgana, right? You just sit there, you CC, you throw the Event Horizon, and everything goes downhill from there. 
So we are going to see the Blade of the Rune King build coming out for East Phantom as well. So again, math. I, I don't think this is mathematically correct. I, I, I keep forgetting that build path. Yeah, because it's so rare. We usually see Shrive Breaker. Do they have enough damage here? No Shrive Breaker means not enough fuel. Yeah, and they're going to give it a shot. And I don't think he's going to survive. The shield is up for a little bit. But that's still going to be the kill. Xerx, with that final slash of the foot, is going to secure the third for himself. Yeah, pardon me. Uh, I mean, that that was absolutely uh, brutal to watch. And that's what happens when you don't go Gore Drinker or Stripe Breaker. If you've got the Stripe Breaker, it's not the healing part of me. It's more the slow, and then maybe you can run out. The Flash was available, but the problem is without that slow, they're just going to chase you down. They'll still be able to get you, and the CC Bouncy House is more than enough. With the Gore Drinker, actually, East Phantom might have been able to trade it over, find a kill, sustain long enough here. But what the Blade of the Rune King does give this set is the ability to 1v1 Xerx here. And Goon mm. cannot just be up top 24-7. So the moment Goon shows anywhere else, East Phantom more than happy to just dive in and find kills. So like you said, can't be everywhere. And bot lane is being pressured by two. Catamatic so far is one of the stronger. But here we go. Slingshot coming in. That's going to be a little bit of a depth charge. But that's going to be Lona Double trying. Teams. And oh, wow. So unfortunately, Goon helped out the leona by saving up and that's going to be the jump in this is there now everyone charges right back in they're going to give it a shot cubsy is okay. down and ben horizon collecting everyone Stop. baking forcing it out but that's going to be the latest respite keeping oh, park no. alive and they turn it around a little bit that is huge flash haymaker doesn't get anyone and goon is going to drop down into the puddles that was it rmc you talked about it you pointed it out and you said that might be their undoing grid could have had Almost a full team like could have had three kills. I swear could have had three kills. They only come out with one. Arco should have been dead to rights. Uh, just very, very unfortunate to see that. And that's one of the things you got to worry about with these sort of invincibilities, these invulnerabilities. It buys Park a bit of breathing room, but the grid esports are still firmly in control of the game right now. Their solo laners are still ahead of their counterparts. And it's more this bot side they need to be a little bit worried about. Constant support and Cubsy feel like they're starting to fall behind and that shouldn't be the case they're up in cs they're up in items right now but rizgo just playing so so well on the engages and disengages yeah, he's done a great job of maintaining a healthy lead and again still waiting for macarena to try and enter some of these fights third dragon is going to go down grid are going to have a great time with a little bit uh, more help and oh okay goon goon knows the trick goon knows the uh the smite trick with zach that only zach can accomplish yeah, the ability to sort of hop over the wall, but not into the pit. And you actually get the vision as if the dragon's close enough. You can try for the drive-by there. Nice attempt. They don't secure it. And this is a little risky for the side of Park Esports. Because while Mountain Soul is one of the least flashy souls, it is also the worst one to try and come back from. If you're in a hole, if you're behind significantly here, the inability to kill people, the extra shielding and the extra tankiness, feels the worst here. Like extra damage is great and all that, but you can kill somebody before they do the damage. Then they've got extra shielding and they have the damage from their items and just the lead they have. Well, good luck trying to get those bounties. Good luck trying to bounce back into the game. It's also a deceptively strong one, right? Uh, that's that's the best way I can put it. With the Ocean Soul, you can definitely feel the fact that, hey, they are regening. You're watching their health bars go up, right? But with the Mountain Soul, with the Mountain, uh, with the mountain Dragons, it's a deceptive buff. If you build a little bit of armor matrixes, you don't feel that outright. It's not very noticeable. It's just like, hey, they don't die as quickly. And so it gives sometimes a false sense there. What I do want to point out, though, is not many people on the side of grid esports are going to be able to utilize those dragons effectively, right? You take a look at the itemization. Four of them are pure damage. Only one of them is going to be building a decent amount of tank to really feel that 6, 12, 18% increase. Well, no, can't go to 18 because you can't get three dragons. Uh, so 12% is probably what we're going to see. I mean, technically, too, you'll see the set often build a lot of armor as well, so that will help. And Leona, as a, as a straight tank, uh, will benefit from that. But definitely not the, the biggest uh, dragon in terms of just dragons. It's more the soul than anything else here. They do manage to pick up the Eye of the Herald, and they've given it over to East Phantom, who has been split-pushing for most of the game. We've not really seen him participate in a lot of these big uh, team fights, or, well, skirmishes, really, uh, not so much the big team fights. But Xerx has no answer whatsoever here. And now if Xerx stays in lane, he's going to get abused. If he leaves lane, Herald drops, they're going to lose an inner turret. Maybe even get a second charge off onto the inhibitor turret. In fact, they're actually rotating Macarena to try and deal with this here. And they've got Goon looking to try and get a gank as well. 
it's a lose-lose situation. You don't really have a choice in how it set ups, but no one is going to chance it. East Phantom still pushing on his own. However, I do want to say this is the first time we have seen Park in an even advantage at about 20 minutes. They're 8 to 7, only about 4.1k behind, and only lost two towers, right? I think that is a phenomenal place to be in with the composition that you currently have and what we've seen before. Like, they are in a position that they could potentially maintain a fight and, and pressure outwards. That's probably what they're thinking too, right? Overall, you're looking at these these numbers that are visible to the players going, okay, they look pretty competitive. But then you look at the 4K gold uh, deficit that they have that we can see, and there's numbers that we can't see, like the Kindred Marks, like the Vigar stacks. Those are stacking, those won't show, and those will have an impact in these team fights. So because of that, that scaling that we're seeing, five marks on Kindred, thank you, Observer, uh, and 140 stacks on that Vigar so far, that's a lot of damage added here. Park needs to start making some proactive plays. They've been passive, they've been scaling all well and good. Now you need to actually get to the team fights and drag it in a minute and a half feels like the natural point for them to fight. You don't want to give so over. You want to bring the strength of your team fight that we've seen before here. Oh, and you see it on the screen there. The League of Draven is calling for more gold, <laughs> calling for a larger bonus. And anyone that gives him that opportunity, he will take it for that bounty board and again three kills in you can see the bloodthirst already in there this is the build for a draven now just raw damage don't need any attack speed boost because here comes the fight that's gonna be a solo fire landing huge pick on the goon and he is gonna go down can anyone else get something back in Rocco does have to flash away and that is gonna be goon down they're flying into the back line they get the draw that's the one that Whoa. they need and they do bring up kindred kindred's just dead that is a even out. great pick he couldn't he was hooked he was bounced around like a pinball, and he isn't allowed, but the fight is still going on. Event Horizon solos out one. Now they're going to try and do a little bit more. Spinning Axe knocks Rizko out, and now they're going to follow. The egg is down. The constant support is there. Zero Stopper brings him a little bit closer and flashes out out of the tower. Rizko is going to go down. Egg is soon to oh fall, and would you know it, Grid under the tower of the outer mid is going to find an ace for one. Bloodthirster for constant support there. Blood for the Blood God. They just go <laughs> charging in and you think for a second that they can turn the tides. They catch out uh, Charles there. No Lamb's Respite came through and they looked even like they were going to stop Shelly's charge, but nope. No fear whatsoever. We're talking about the stats, the invisible stacks that were stacking up, the gold lead and Grid Esports just rammed it down Park's throat there. They get the turret and they're going to get Baron, which means even more turrets for Grid Esports. That, that fight still impresses me. So I hope we get a chance to kind of go back and take a look at that and how that transpired because it was the most chaotic yet controlled chaos that I've seen Grid do. It was, it was phenomenal. I've used that word so much already today. But it helped because, again, you take a look at the kills that went through. A lot of it went onto Constant, who is now yeah. uh, two of three items uh, plus completion gold uh, away from an Infinity Edge. Once he gets that, no one is going to survive. Dragon is starting up once again. They're just going to go onto this Nautilus. I don't think Nautilus is going to survive, but a light back, and that's actually going to knock Charles very, very low. They have to stay off the Dragon. They're going to leep in. They're going to try and get Charles. He is still going to stay alive. Event Horizon keeping him alive. Yeah. ABK just so, so good. Catamax is able to pick a one. Turn around by Macarena. Who is able to pick up a kill, drive by a little bit too high health, and I don't think they're gonna get it. Steel is not gonna happen. Over the wall to go, oh, baby cage getting two, and that's just the meteor shattering parks dreams with that one. Triple it up, triple it down, seven, oh, and two, Catamax. We are talking about constant supports picking up kills, been five and two. Catamatic just picked up a triple and said he shot from 4 and 0 to 7 and 0 right now. And you cannot ignore this Vigar here, just absolutely ripping through you. The thing with Vigar is that once the burst comes down, you cannot flinch. You need to stare him down and then re engage because he's got cooldowns. If you kind of poke in, let him do the poke, disengage, wait for the cooldowns, second rotation, he'll just find someone else. Doesn't even need that ult right now. Does not even close, just full ability haste at this one i want i wish i could see the runes as well because that's pretty much i want to say like 50 or 60 uh if you stack it up properly right that is a ridiculous number of uh cutting down your ability uh cooldowns and event horizon is up so often so is the solar flare right the leona we haven't even touched on Cubsy. he has consistently had every time the solar flare is up i'm pretty sure it just goes on cooldown right just always throwing it out saying hey we know we have the damage we might as well go for it yeah and Cubsy's not afraid to quote-unquote, waste the ultimate there. We saw him just use a single target on Rarko, 
and it works, right? As soon as you find a single pick, that's good enough. Because even if you had to blow an ultimate for it, you instantly converted it to a 4v5. And right now, every single member of Park is necessary for their engage. Uh, 70 ability haste, thank you, on Catamatics right now. 208 stacks as well. So 41% cooldown reduction. That's pretty significant. And it's not just on the ult that we're talking about. It's about the event horizon as well, the constant CC, the spammability of that Bellful Strike, that Q coming through as well. It's starting to hit the point where it's almost coming out like an auto here. You forgot to mention the greatest part of Agar's kit. The fact that the Meteor coming down uh, actually has a cooldown of its own. For I believe sure. every 50 uh, Primordial Burst, which is his passive that he gets, every 50 uh, AP he stacks, it's another five to 10 ability haze knocked off or, or something of that sort. It is a ridiculous number. It is absolutely hilarious. There is, uh, There are so many funny YouTube videos. I think Vanderil is probably the best one that you've seen. Thousand stacks on him and he's just, it is zero cooldown. He is literally dropping uh, dropping meteors everywhere. It is ridiculous. So a uh, little bit of a fun fact there. Uh, there it is. Thank you very much, Observer. Every 50, uh, ability. Wow, that's really funny. It's still just ability cool. I wonder how that interacts. That's actually really, really funny. Um, <laughs> hey, I wonder how that works. But still, it's really, really good. It works well. <laughs> that much I can tell you. And uh, I mean, it, it makes sense, right? Like uh, the, the fact that, you know, you, you can just constantly spam that damage. And that's why Vygar is one of those champions that's kind of difficult to play against because you have to try and push early. You have to be proactive, and Grid knew that that was going to be uh, an, an issue here for Park, the fact that they do tend oh. to be reactive. Instead, we see the push coming in, and oh. everybody has to run into the base to stop this. That's letting constant support take this topside turret for free here right now. Oh, and that was... They're... Park Esports are a little bit lucky that Grid decided to not aggress that hard because you looked in the bottom lane, Xerix is actually very late on the recall, right? That was a little bit problematic in that sense. You needed everyone to rotate a little bit faster. As soon as you see five of the Grid Esports rotating down, you got to respond or uh, rotating through mid, you have to respond in time. Now we do see the bottom lane. This is the last, uh, last outer tower, I would say, uh, of this base. And... We'll see if they can crack it. Should be fairly easy as it's only Xerix there. They're gonna go ahead, and give it up, and give it a shot. Wow. Okay. Okay. Uh, I. Uh, okay. I mean, Draven. We, we've seen this happen multiple times now. Draven started thinking they're invincible. You're strong, but we should note that this is a Kraken Slayer Draven, not an Immortal Shield Pole Draven. So <laughs> you don't have the shielding. Uh, the overheal is not enough on that Bloodthirster there. Uh, constant rip support has been reminded of their mortality. Just that, that is the most that, that's like when you're playing in the game, you're like, dude, my ADC, what is he doing, bro? Like, we're pushing, we're trying to get the tower, bro. Why are you dying? Um, also, spam pings. I always, I always forget spam pings, so. but yeah, that is gonna be his death. He is still very, very strong, right? Three and a half items deep. I think he is closing in as the higher one. No, uh, surprisingly enough. No, he is the one that has the highest amount of items. He's 13,000 currently, and he's climbing even higher. Yeah. It's only him. It's only him. He's just like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's those adoration stacks coming through, man. Like, <laughs> he's, he's able to, you know, take advantage of that and get more gold. Uh, Burn about to spawn in about 10 seconds, and Elder will be up in a minute after that. So... Right now, Grid Esports, you know, they're just setting up for the final sweep here. Take Baron, go for Elder. And Park, they don't exactly have an option. If you give up the Baron, it's okay. But if you give up the Elder, it's going to be game over. They're trying to walk into this, but it's so hard. No, you can't. They had no vision. They had no chance. Now the fight's going to break out all the way to the back on the do fight three. Can they find a little bit more? Lambs as it goes up. Glacial Storm is going down, but I don't think it's going to happen. They're going to try and zone it out, but it's just a little bit too little too late. Grid already too dang strong, and they take it home. The third event horizon of that team fight will lead to three deaths for one. Charles was able to secure the Baron just in time, but the teleport straight into the base on a now dead ward. It's going to allow Catamatics to zone out. Oh, they found, they found Zach. Oh, I don't think he was stunned in the uh, baby cage. So still though, two alive, not gonna be enough to slow down this push. Not against Baron here, and Anivia is great at wave clearing, but that's against normal minions, not Baroned up minions. The damage just isn't going to be enough, and Goon has no damage to speak of. This should be extra kills. Yes, it should. Pat the stats. Who's going to pick it up? 
It is going to be the Draven Constant getting a little bit of revenge here in the bird. Bird is dead here. Follow up into the fountain, a little bit of a pull. Baby Cage into the Solar Flare, into everything. That is a mini Wombo combo to clear things up. 23 to 13, 30 minutes in game number one in the books for the Grid Esports as they move up in the third place series from zero. When you look at how that game went here, it feels like the Grid Esports just read Park Esports like a book. We talked about the fact that Park tends to go down early. They, well, they went down early and they just never got a chance to come back into it. And when you've got picks like the Nautilus, like the Zac here, you do need to take advantage of that and you do need to push that lead. They are great engaged champions, but we didn't see that come through. Goon got a couple of ganks and that was kind of it. After that, he was too far behind, couldn't do anything. We didn't see the Nautilus engage. And on the other side, Grid Esports, I love the way they drafted. Leona Draven instantly meant that they were going to win the early game and they snowballed that deal as well. Worked great. And then you've got the Vigar for late game insurance, the Kindred for late game insurance, which were allowed to just scale completely unpunished. Yep, just a strong game. And again, we did see Glimmers of Hope Park coming out a little bit better, but they still need a bit more. They're getting closer and closer to that point. Maybe we see it here, maybe we don't. But again, only time will tell. We'll be right back with the second game in this best of three series between Park Esports and the Grid Esports.
Let the dancing begin. I didn't see that coming. And we are back. Of course, I look like I am rising out of the depths with uh, a little bit of glow behind me, which is very entertaining. But uh, I'm very excited. Again, we are here ready for game number two in this best of three series. Again, it was Good Esports that came away with the first game. And it was it was very, very interesting to watch. Again, a little bit closer for Park Esports this time around than in the group stages after a little bit of prep. And I'm excited to see if they can do even more so this time around. Yeah, and while their early game looked a little bit better, their mid game looked a bit more stifled. We didn't see mm -hmm. the sort of aggression that we had seen previously. We didn't even, you know, no hints of an engage coming through from the Nautilus or Zach. And Orbital, I feel like for this game, with your backs against the wall, this is your potentially final match of this entire tournament, of the esports festival here by Unified Premier. So I'd like to see them switch things up a bit, maybe go like full early game here and actually just put out the aggression relentlessly. Bands are already almost done. They've kept the same sides parked, still on the blue side. Diego, Kindred, Rumble. So Silas is now available here. And Gritty Sports banning Thresh, Morgana, and Caitlyn. I believe the Morgue is a new one here. Nope, uh, I believe Morgue was the same one. We didn't talk about it too okay. much because it flipped in last. So uh, same bands, same bands, I think, across the board. So again, mm -hmm. no worries about it. And you said you wanted a little bit of a change up. This Swain yeah. would be a nice one. Yeah, I love it. I mean, Swain right now can be flexed to either solo lane or bot lane support here. And if you do run into something like the Draven, it's actually a great pickup as well because you know where Draven wants to be. He wants to be wherever the axes are landing. So suddenly, 
that Draven's playing a mini game where you're trying to catch your axes and you increase the difficulty by adding dodgeball to it as well. You gotta <laughs> dodge those roots. If it lands, you're gonna miss the axe. You gotta dodge those visions of the Empire as well, which might not hurt that much, but it's gonna give Swain stack and health as well, and that's gonna allow him to escape. Yeah, if you can dodge a grass or you can dodge anything, you can dodge a ball or just about every little thing. But of course, the eff is this is this right? Do we have this confirmed? Double eighty carry pickup. Mm. You know what this might be, Orbital. Until I hear otherwise. All right, I'm right bring it to me. Right. Bring it to me. Bring it to me. There is dark tech right now, which I have actually not personally seen, but I've heard people talk about it. Jungle affiliates apparently exist. Uh uh. uh. X, 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 power X, 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 so. X. No. All right. I mean, uh, uh, all right, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. We have been, we have at least been confirmed that it is not a mistake. We we tend to do this to make sure that the players are okay with it. We try and keep this as integral as possible. So that that is an Aphelios. That is an Aphelios. We'll see where it goes, of course. Now we are going to see on the flip side, the Leona now taken. So a little bit splitting up the duo possibility. Feels like Park Esports kind of notified that. And then once again, this is Juani. I think we know where it's going to go. So we'll see if it pans out this time. Do we? Do we know? Is it Xerix taking right, in the top true. lane or is it Goon in the jungle? Both of them run it. And I already love what I'm seeing from Park Esports here. You know, they're they're doubling down on their team fighting right away, right? Like all three of those, great AOE CC, great at just generally fighting this out. And Draven as an AD carry relies a lot on bursting out a single target with that extreme damage. Swain's great at negating that. Leona and Sidrani are both tanky enough. Grit picking the Olaf. I am getting more and more confused the more I see their drop here, you know. So it's pro it's not a jungle of Helios, most likely. Or, I mean, I guess you could technically put Olaf top lane and with the jungle of Helios. Um, I know our producer or our observer, uh, Sam, mentioned in my ear there, Helios top is apparently another piece of dark tech. I was not aware of the existence of that one. And I don't like it because Aphelios is very immobile and can be greatly punished. But that might happen because we do see an Olaf picked up by the Grid Esports. And you know what we won't see though is that Anivia, unfortunately, Macarena will have to find a different champion to play. There are some options out there, but we'll see what's picked up. The Silas Band away on the other side. Of course, you don't want to allow that Glacial Prison to be someone that solo flare. You don't want that hit your team. And then the Camille. So really forcing Xerus' hand, really saying, hey, listen, we want to lock that Sejuani top and give ourselves a good jungle matchup. And the last band coming out for Park here. They're hovering the Nautilus, and I don't hate it. I think Grid Esports wants to be picking some stuff that can disengage at this point. Things like the Gragas, maybe even the Shin Zhao. Um, we saw lane Shin Zhao yesterday in the mid lane. The Crescent Guard will be very helpful, but basically you want to make sure that Park doesn't get to just dogpile in on you here. And Park can continue to go with things like the Seraphine pickup, for example. We saw Rise go play it yesterday as well. It would pair very well with the Leona here. Uh, they do need some physical damage, and an AD carry would not go amiss here. Uh, Aphelios, unfortunately, did get picked up. A Jinx, for example, is on the table. That's another very strong synergizing champion, and you've got plenty of front line for it as well. Yep. Alasar is going to be locked in, so whichever ADC is down there will get the support of the Moo Cow. Flip side, we are seeing a little bit of this. Oh, so, hmm. If that's an Akali locked in and that goes to Macarena, that would be the biggest 180 I think I've ever seen in my life. Okay, so it's hovered over the Kai'Sa. A little bit shorter range. I know, I know, I know RMC is a little bit worried about this and they swap it. All right, they heard RMC. They're like, listen, listen. Okay, okay, we heard you. <laughs> Getting away from the Kai'Sa. You're already very heavily loaded on magic there. Kai'Sa's, you know, a hybrid and hybrid marksman does a bit of magic does a bit of physical you need straight physical at this point here so like we discussed the jinx can be a great pickup here uh we didn't touch too much on the alistair pickup here for the gritty sports and i've got to say i've got mixed feelings about it it's a great tag but at the same time it's not going to help you disengage all these sort of big aoe's coming through wukong being picked up for the top lane as well i really do like that pickup uh, it is physical damage and they just keep overloading on the aoe grid esports desperately needs something here to be able to disengage because Olaf, you can run it with the Ragnarok, but the sheer amount of damage coming out as well, I'm not sure that Olaf is going to be able to do anything in the team fights. Your Draven, your Aphelios, they don't get to play the game in the team fights either unless they get something to really help stop the engage. Alistair isn't quite it. Victor, not what I would have expected necessarily, but the Gravity Well and the Chaos Storm certainly do help to answer back at least a little bit in these big team fights. As you were talking, one of my thoughts actually zipped over to Gragas. Uh, Gragas yeah. could go top and jungle, even mid. We see an old yeah. school Gragas mid. 
Uh, and and I thought about it, right? I was like, hey, that might be nice if you are just looking to for disruption. Because at this point, I want to say Park Esports, their drafts look solid at points yep. here in this uh, in this series, and I have to really, really put it to them on that one. Grid, though, you see these champions come out. This is an overload of damage. This is something that they've done consistently throughout the entirety of this tournament. And when it works, it works, and it works like a charm. But now that we see all these champions, uh, kind of big question marks, right? Because that Aphelios, we know the Draven's probably going in the bot side. Theorizing, you even said, no matter which way it goes, it feels like the Aphelios and Olaf kind of lose out on those bats. Yeah, uh, it, it's, it's rough for both of them, but I'm actually thinking now, your Aphelios can go into the bot lane. I actually prefer that rather than putting the Draven there because into the Leona, it's going to be difficult for Draven to really pop off here and find those kills. And Park doesn't have to be proactive. Normally when you see a Leona, they only want to go in. But in this particular case, you've got a Jinx in your back pocket. She just wants to farm. So as long as you let Ryze go farm up on the Jinx, you don't need to be aggressive with this Leona and that's not giving Draven the opportunity to get rolling here. So if that's the case, why not put the Aphelios down there to match the Jinx scaling? Draven also not the most mobile champion, but I think he'll have a better matchup into this Wukong than an Aphelios will. Because Wukong's just going to dive your AD carry. In fact, uh, back in the LEC, we saw Wukong being picked in the bot lane specifically to hunt down these sort of immobile carries like Aphelios, like Varus here. So, I, I think you put the Draven up top to deal with the Wukong, you put the Aphelios down bot, and then your Olaf just keep bouncing top and mid, back and forth. Your bot lane's gonna be fine, they're gonna scale just, oh, just fine without intervention. Yeah, but uh, keep in mind again, Park Esports are on the back foot. That can lead to one or two cases. Like you said before, it can lead to a uh, pretty nice stylized cheese coming out. One of those points where everything is thrown on the table. It happens. It works for them. You know, that's one of the charms of these best of three series. However, on the flip side, there is a mental that sometimes collapses as much as we hate to say it. it it's weird to feel behind up points. It's weird to kind of feel in a hopeless situation. So my eyes on how do you play? Do you continue to play to your style? Are you forcing yourself to try and change? Because again, I don't want to see someone lose their style midway through. The composition lends itself to still that team fight uh, prowess to saying, hey, we can still throw our bodies at you and give it a shot. So I'm very, very excited. Of course, uh, I want your thoughts closing here for where we are going to see a start of this fight if it's for a park. Because we know Grid can start it off. We know Grid is going to be popping off in some of the zones. We know if that Draven gets a single kill, it's over, right? I want to see eyes over uh, for Park Esports. I want to see where they need to hammer in. Again, the composition is there. The early game, we've hit it over and over again. Let's see where that point of focus should be. I think for Park here, I really like their composition. I love it you know, when you're losing, you go back to basics, you pick something easy to execute with a lot of reliability and uh, the ability to come back into the game even when you're behind and teamfight comes through just that. I don't think we're going to see them really pick up the early game uh, too much. Unfortunately, I think that's a, a mindset thing. If anybody, I do expect maybe Xerix to make some aggressive plays with that Wukong into whichever marksman you run into. I think that's sort of the, the possibility uh, that we see here for early aggression. Instead, what I really want to see change from Park Esports is the engage. You literally have engaged with every single champion except for the Jinx right now. And you could argue that Zap could maybe find a ping. <laughs> so, if you've got that much engaged, you do need to pull the trigger. Like I said, we didn't see it last game. Goon and Rarko didn't really find much uh, in the mid game with the Zack and the Nautilus here. I want them to look for it this time, and I want them to group up. This composition works only as five. Sure, Wukong maybe can split push, but really what you want to do is fight as five. So, I want to see them group up, just find the engage. One CC lands on two targets, good enough. Everybody can just power it. You should be able to get kills nice and easy. Yep, that is going to be the call. We'll see if they can play it through. Again, the chess pieces have been placed and they have been placed strategically. Now you have to execute it on top. Let's see if they can go ahead and do it. We'll be right back with game number two between Park Esports and the Grid Esports. No, 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 no.
And here we go once again, game number two, potentially the series game here with some beautiful skins on some of these uh, champions. But the most important thing is I think we just saw Baby Anivia. I'm pretty sure we did. Is that? No, I think that was Beatrice. Isn't that Swainsburg? It matches uh -oh. the skin. Is that, no, 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 no. Nothing, nothing. Listen, listen. Nothing matters besides that. <laughs> I just saw yes. Ducky. I just I saw know. Ducky. I love Ducky. Yes, yes. Back, back. Go. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Yeah, Ducky. 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 I remember when Ducky used to be, what was it? It was like a 1 in 1,000 or 1 in 2,000 chance to get it or something. It was ridiculous. I honestly don't really care about Ducky. Gonna be honest about this. I just saw Beatrice, Hexec Beatrice. What? That's a much more interesting bird to me. It looks all way right, cooler. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and Ducky, Ducky's commonplace now. But overall, I, I do want to talk a little bit about the teams because you mentioned the fact that this is potentially, you know, uh, Park's last game here if they do lose this. And I really don't think that they... They've got a good composition, so I really think they can win this and bring it to a game three. We talked about who was going where. We now have confirmation that the Aphelios is a solo top. And it's not that Wukong that I was hoping to see run into it. We're seeing the Sidrani for Xerix come in once again. Again, no flash with the Ignite here. There's still kill pressure. And if you're going to put Wukong in the jungle, then you actually have more damage coming out in your ganks. And I want to see Goon look for these early ganks. It doesn't have to be creative. You can brute force a lot of these ganks in your lanes. Yeah, um, at the same time, we were talking about the fact that Grid have been on point. Or not, uh, yes, Grid, sorry. Brain didn't want to work there. We have been talking about how Grid have been on point in a lot of their fights. It's been fantastic to watch them. And uh, and I think, honestly, this Aphelios top is something that I want to attribute to Grid reading the team playbook of Park, right? You know that the Sejuani will most likely come out even though it was blind picked uh, in the early stages. And you say, okay. That's probably a Sejuani top. We could probably run another ADC into it and get away with the farming lane, right? So the the changeups have been made, and it's always about refining the process. Something that I always like to talk about is the storyline of a single series in and of itself. How do the teams adapt to each other, right? And this could be one of them. But, uh, of course, Charles on this Olaf, we had some questions about it. How is it going to work? And we'll see how he is able to manage against the Wukong. Yeah, and especially if you do go for a gank in the top lane, you have to be aware that your top laner, being an Aphelios, being an AD carry, won't bring as much to the table as a Sejuani will. And we talked about the fact that Wukong's got the damage to pair with that CC. Olaf doesn't have hard CC, and you've got just a lot of damage. Granted, no flash on the Sejuani, but just being able to queue away should bring them to safety. Here. Oh, that's a knockback there, and Xerx, there, Rarko is going to have to try and stay alive. One more auto attack could honestly do it, and that's trying to heal up one more. Oh, is he going to flash? He could totally... Ch no, he's not going to do it, so... It I, I thought he was. <laughs> I thought he was, but you know what's going to be met? Both junglers deciding to duke it out. Both had double, so a little bit of tag. And Charles runs straight back out, conceding that top lane rift scuttle. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. You know, you don't necessarily win the 2v2, and Charles was hovering for a gank to the top side, so didn't start up the crab immediately. Does come back to bite him, but Charles, you know, he's just going to rotate straight to the bot side. We'll take that crab instead, and we guarantee the bot crab because we just saw Rizgo and uh, Marco getting shoved under their turret in a kind of dicey situation. Yep. Dangerous to say the least. But of course, we are waiting to see what they can make of it. So a little bit of walk in. Charles is just going to go ahead. Right. Yeah, they did spot him. Are they actually going to chase? Are they actually going to try and chase this? I'm not sure if this is the fight. Yes, they do. I don't know if they can kill, though. That's the question. They also went down a couple more. Auto dice. Oh, auto cancel is there. Oh, Double knockup is huge. We're going to try and get it. Oh, are they going to flash? Yes, they do. Constant flash for the kill. And he can actually keep chasing. Has the speed bus, has the recess, actually has the flash on his own. Oh, and the dodge of the zapper dude. means that he's not going to be slow. But one more auto attack is there. And Goon gets the return kill. The Wukong, the trickster himself. Picks up a kill for his team. Now he's going to try and keep going. Cubsy has no flash. And it looks like this should be the cow falling here. Headbutt backwards. Oh, wait. Is that actually enough? That, that's going to be enough. No, okay. There is the final oh, jump. No. And a nice pulverizer. And he's out. Cubsy. The cow lives. That is illegal. <laughs> you can see all the damage coming out. I think Rizgo, you know, not use, using the, the rocket instead of the zap there. Really came back to hurt. It was just a little bit of damage, not enough there. CC would have mattered a little bit more. Amazing play, but Park 
able to respond at least. It was a very overzealous play, I feel, coming through from Grid's bot lane. And there's an opportunity here. Flash is blown from almost everybody down there right now. Only Hex Flash for Cubsy. If Goon ganks down there in the next five minutes, you should be able to find some nice kills here. And save for Charles as well. If ever Rizgo and Rocco step up beyond that river line, that Olaf can just come swooping in for more kills. I like how you say swooping in, and it really is. It's just like sweeping in, throws an axe, runs away, and says, ha, I got 300 gold, ha, and then runs back to like the jungle or something. Like that's how I assume in Olaf Kings. Uh, we are <laughs> seeing, <laughs> I don't know why that came to mind. They're we buttons. are gonna go. I don't think they go, Arr! and then they go, <laughs> <laughs> Put more, more energy into it, Arnold. <laughs> Arr, oh, arr, oh, here we go. This is gonna be good now. We are gonna see a little bit of a static storm slocking down Catamatics, and he is going to fall a very nice solid gank. A little bit of help, and uh, Macarino will go ahead and secure the second kill uh, for Park, third of the game. Yeah, they will lose Dragon for it. Has no vision whatsoever coming through from Park, so they will give that up. It is Mountain Drake, and one Mountain Drake by itself doesn't feel amazing so it's okay to give that over i'm more interested in the fact that mark arena finally for the first time i believe throughout this entire tournament is really starting to get the attention oh. that they need oh, oh. the hex tech flash here's oh, no. raigo's death and xerix teleports in only to face the axes and the hard-earned music that is grid starting to get away with this bottom lane and yeah dancing away <laughs> no 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 you can't Just stop here? it that's so mean to do glacial prison does oh. lock it down but Justin is out no Rocco should have this Rocco oh, should no no, no. no I was just there. On so me. unfortunate to have I mean, unfortunately, depending on whose point of view. In the first place, yeah. that shouldn't have been available. Xerex played that so, so well to be able to turn the tides because that TP was definitely going to cost them a lot there. The, the fact that East Phantom now gets to farm unpressured as well. And when you teleport into a, a, an Alistair Draven, there's actually a pretty good chance they just completely chunk you, kill you right away. So I think Xerex did a great job turning that around. Caught to support though, three one and zero. Oh. This ball lane's only gonna get harder. And Rarko as a Leona, his the, the ball lane's not fun. You can't go in anymore. I think he just wants to start roaming. Why not join Macarena in the mid lane? I think that's a good place to go. Uh, there's a lot of kill potential. Victor's kind of squishy. Victor is squishy, and they've already proven that he is killable. Right? That is something that is very, very important. Macarena like, doing a okay job of CSing, trying to keep pressure up. Wasn't able to pick up a lost chapter though, so that does kind of stifle. Uh, that ability to stay in lane for a long period of time. However, Rocco looking for it. He's playing back fairly well in Cub Z. This is a question. Oh, all the way back in the alcove. They're waiting for Wukong and they're rotating down. Uh oh, this is going to be a bad meet. They go. are, but they're a little bit late. Keep in mind, that is Goon alone. That's going to be the Rockets coming out, hitting a few times with Rizzo. That's going to be it. Rizzo is able oh. to pick it up, and the return is here. Park, pick up two in the bottom lane. This is what we came here to see, Orbital Park. They're being proactive. They're making moves at level six. This is not something we had previously seen from them. And I love the look here. We talked about the fact that they've got such great lanes to ganks almost across the board here. Bot lane now level six. We saw the rocket come up. Solar players available. They can repeat that gank. Or if Leona wants to go and start roaming as well, that's a huge move for them. You can go into the mid lane. Even if you show up top lane right now, East Phantom has been completely unpressured has doubled the CS, but any CC should see that Aphelios is dead. Yeah, and that is exactly what Park Esports are wanting to do, right? That's their whole composition. Lose the early game, play for mid to late, and even now they're not fully losing it. However, Constant, so three kills in, has the noon, uh, I believe, noon quiver, uh, and then the pickaxe on top. So still a fair bit ahead in the current situation. And I, and I foresee a single problem coming up, right? It, it's weird to say this, but East Phantom on the ADC, you have to decide if East Phantom is allowed to continue CSing up, he is also going to be a threat. He is finishing up a coal, which meant he went straight for the CS advantage. This is going to actually be fairly dangerous because, uh, again, Helios is now known as a top tier ADC again. Yeah, and with, with enough of a front line here, you can kind of cut through pretty much anything running into you, tank or otherwise. You can see there's a huge gold discrepancy in the top side, 600 gold. That's where Grid really have an advantage. But 
They are balling actually a thousand plus uh, as well. So both their ADCs really starting to come online here, Orbital. And that is going to be weighing on the back of Hark's mind. CC, great, good, but you have to hit the right members in order to win those fights. If you don't, hit, uh, if you don't kill the ADCs, you don't hit the ADCs with all that lockdown there, then sure, you've killed uh, an Olaf, sure, you've killed a Victor, but the ones with gold, the ones with damage are still pumping that up. Oh, with everything slowed down, eight kills in ten and a half minutes constant, I think is kind of okay just throwing the axes, right? Trying to farm it up, make sure he doesn't call too much aggression, especially with the dragon coming up. First one did go over to grid that was taken away by Charles Solo. And now we get to see the ocean, so that will mean either a Cloud Soul or an Infernal Soul. So 50-50 on which one comes up. Oh my gosh, the amount of control wards down here, Orbital. I feel like even if Park wants to clear the vision, it's going to take them so long because they have to hit so many times each control ward four times, each normal oh. one three times. <laughs> Charles just stands in there, watches the ward come down and go, oh, okay, I'll clear it now. <laughs> Completely unafraid. I just want to say, as someone that's played, uh oh, nope, nope, can't talk about that. This is going to be the fight. That's going to be a flash out. East Andrew is going to try and run, but this, uh, the Cyclone directly on the Catamax. He is going to possibly survive. Oh, flash out. He is able to stave off death by 25 HP. A little bit of root under the tower. Cubsy is a very tanky boy. They'll break one. That's it. Tower shot helping out. Alistar is able to pick up one that is also going to be the Ocean Dragon picked up. And would you know it? Our MC, our prayers have been answered. Our second infernal soul of the day. Third, I actually think. Third one, yeah. I think that the second one we didn't see get taken. But this time, we might. Because the game is very close right now. I know there's a 2k gold lead. It doesn't matter. The team fighting composition for Park makes up for that here. We've already seen their ability to find picks. They unfortunately weren't able to find catamatics. And interestingly, they're opting to trade the, the Herald here for turret pressure. I don't know if that's necessarily the right call. Uh, because they can't actually get onto that. The wave clear is a bit too good on the side of grid esports right now. Tries to go, throws out the chompers, uh, just for style. And that's gonna be there. And Ragnarok actually popped. So Rocco now has enough threat generated that he is able to force an early Ragnarok out of Charles. Yeah, you know, that, that's gotta be one of the most chill Vikings I've seen over though. Just trucking along, you know. Pop that Ragnarok, don't look back. <laughs> it wasn't as if Rocco was going to kill you. Yeah, it was yeah. Just like, okay, we're just going to pop this because why not? I hope that Charles doesn't regret it. We've not seen too much out of Charles so far, gank wise. And Olaf is an early game champion. Once you know you hit the mid to late game, you're just kind of a, a, a meat body, a meat bag there to soak up some of the damage. Uh, you're unlikely to be able to get through everybody to actually reach Rizgo there, at least if you're coming in the front. So maybe we'll see some creative pathing, maybe we'll see some flanks. Rocco? Oh. <laughs> they want to go for it, but they are. The they want, punishment them. ADC is so good. You were talking about the heal coming out. The CC chain, though, is just too strong. I think that's going to be the kill. Shut down. Going over the a few of those reaching from. Nah, nope. You don't get to live. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about, right? Like just any sort of CC going to the top lane would have to create any sort of roams. And that's why I don't like a in the top lane. It's a long lane. It's not safe. But now Macarena. Not safe either here in the bot side. Yes, it is a 1v2. Yes, you're a Swain, but that Draven, he's 3 2 and 0, and he's got a Kraken Slayer with your name on it. The amount of gold that's been funneled into Constant right now has been absolutely ridiculous. You can see him even getting more right now. He is now well over 1400. Uh, this is that's what we gonna go down. Yeah, that's one? it. Gonna be the first tower rolling to grid and they're gonna go for it again four on three though i don't know if they want to that's gonna be unbreakable we'll use all the way in the back line and they forgot to help out their adc oh, no. i think it's gonna be death oh no charles goes ahead and pops off and grid go ahead and watch the Derek's? stars align back lines there is gonna try but again he's not as tanky as he would like the zap from the victor force a kill out double kill for the Draven, he's gonna go for a little bit more. Nope, Charles picks up one. Macarena gonna go a little bit low, and Victor oh. picks it up. That is an ace at 14 and a half minutes with no one dead on the Grid Esports side. Five for all clean ace your orbital from Grid, and how do they keep getting away with this? They go in, and we talked about the fact that if you don't focus those carries, they will do the damage, constant support. This is not a Mono Shield Bow. This is not Bloodthirster, it's Kraken Slayer. And he gets away with it. The split focus from Park really coming back to bite them. Are we gonna see a round two? Goon is looking for the flank around Catamatics. He wants to oh, try, right. but again, sitting on a ward, not the best place. 
I also want to emphasize that was a 4v5. A 4v5 that occurred because Aphelios is still in the top lane. We actually get to see how that goes. Yeah, and, and you can see right off the bat, Goon kind of went in and was all alone. The Cyclone didn't actually catch constant support, and that meant that he got to just pump out the damage. And by the time Xerix comes up, it's too late. It, it should have been a 5v4, but realistically, what we ended up seeing was a 2v2, two 2v2 split, followed by then a, a 4v3 there. And it, it's just not quite the focus you want to see. Park needs to play together as a unit the cc has to be layered not burnt on individual targets and grid they're more than happy if you split up here the victor's got agency draven's got agency and olaf is more than happy to 1v1 anybody on the map yep this is the og dueling jungler right just you go against burloff you don't come out <laughs> like that's that's what i remember <laughs> the most i just remember if i saw an olaf running towards me in mid lane i'm just done with the game like just please ff get me out of here i just want to leave uh, we're seeing a lot of Beatrices. I'm sorry, I just noticed that that's really, really cool. But now we're gonna see the fight break out. That's gonna be, again, this time Izaris is going for the Draven, but realizing probably not the best opportunity. Oh, Ooh, a nice step up, but now they're gonna trade it right back. And that is gonna be the shutdown, shutdown for the Trickster. And that is going to put it into a 4v5 positioning. Again, this is a very important dragon here. He's able to pick it up, that's great. But only a knockup onto the clone. And a Moonlight Vigil is down. gonna lock him down. Can they pick it up? East Phantom gets some kills for himself. The top lane ADC takes out the jungler. Yeah, unfortunately, again, the Goon struggling to get into range against this composition. There's so much CC you need to get through. And the moment that decoy gets burnt, your engaged potential kind of drops quite a bit and they burnt the glacial prison trying to find them or getting the pick uh onto constant support there so the rarko i think the, the basic chain of command kind of goes as follows xerex initiates or rarko initiates goon needs to be follow up if goon's the first one in we're seeing that he's still a little bit too squishy to survive the initial engage and then they end up losing the fight 4v5 grid now at soul point here for inferno drake and once they do pick that up, the damage is going to be nasty. <laughs> yeah, not just that. Uh, this is also Macarena starting to stack up as well. It's been fairly good. I think that's 48 stacks so far, which I think is an okay number uh, for the current standings of the game. Oh, 18. Never mind. I don't know how to count. That was a little bit different on there. So 18 <laughs> stacks, still respectful. Yeah, but it, it doesn't give you that that much health, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It will take True. quite a bit True. more time before Macarena is really online. I do like the Zonia's Hourglass pickup, though, and I think it's going to be absolutely important in these fights because Macarena needs to stay alive to put out the damage. And considering how squishy he is and how far ahead constant support and Charles are right now, having that will just allow you to get a full stack Supernova off into the middle of the enemy team. We get a little bit of a breather here. Park Esports and the Grid Esports both feeling maybe a little bit lost. I think Grid may just be waiting for that Dragon to spawn, right? Or maybe that Baron. Uh, honestly, both of them I think will be respectable objective plays. Park need, like you said, to get a little bit more item advantage in their pocket, right? Uh, or not item advantage, but just items, right? Get a little bit more damage, finish up some of your boots and be able to complete the charge there. Once that happens, maybe we can see them uh, feel a bit more confident taking a fight. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of Grid's action has actually been coming off of constant support here on the Draven playing extremely aggressive. So the fact that constant support was in base also kind of think meant that everybody was happy to sit back, wait a little bit. Now he's back, he's where the action is and he went to Herald, so they're going for Herald. Cubsy takes over the job of constant. How's this gonna be Goon? Oh, it's going very low. I think that was actually an early smite. I'm not sure if it was. If uh, if Goon had seen that, he might have had a chance to steal. Uh, kind of the one of the newer changes that they had is as soon as you smite five times, I believe, on camps, uh, everyone's smite goes to 900. Right? That's just the base now. So a little bit of a change up gives easier access to junglers that might be a little bit further behind. Yeah, le levels are far less relevant here, and so smite fights really are much closer to 50-50 here. Constant support plays in constant danger, and it's <laughs> kind of exciting to watch, but it's also very, very scary if you're a good esports fan, because when he's the most fed member on your team, and he's the one pumping out the damage here, 9,000 out of that of 38,000 gold, uh, you, you really need to make sure he stays alive. East Phantom, though, quietly farming up a storm once again here, and I feel like you shouldn't be allowing this Aphelios to kind of get away with this here. Literally, anybody ganking, anybody, even if it's like a Jinx and a Swain combo, should be able to find a kill on him. 
honestly wouldn't have been surprised if we did see a last whisper come out solely just to deal with Xerix in a split push lane. Um, considering you go for the Cole, right, and you know the opponents on the other side, an early last whisper for Aphelio specifically, I think would have been a good gold sink because you can still, if you know you're going to farm up, that just lets you farm even better, right? So. Uh, I, I wonder if that would, but of course he went for the team fight build, went for the rune and hurricane. He is gonna have that in the, in the inventory. We'll continue to power through. We're gonna have to wait and see if he's able to manage with his team to secure this Baron. Double ADC could easily take it home. Yeah, and you mentioned the last whisper here. We've gone beyond that here. We've got ourselves a Lord Dominic's regard on constant support. So they're not looking to match up East Phantom, it looks like, into Xerex. They want constant support to be dealing with Xerex here. And it, why not? It would work. Xerex doesn't get to split push too long before getting called in. Baron being started up, no pings coming down, all visions cleared. And you can see Grid has everything on the top side lit up like a Christmas tree. Just shy, just a little over 21 minutes to go ahead and secure that. They are going to freely push. Oh, no. Uh oh. Oh, very good call on the uh, Xerix teleport. The Sejuani will get away, and unfortunately, the dump of the Rift Herald in the mid is not going to secure more than just about six minions. I think is what's going to happen. He's Phantom over the wall, gets stunned up, and the chain CC is there. Ooh. Out he goes. Is able to minutely pull the flat. My gosh, that is. That is the button mashing to a T. Now Cubsy is gonna go in. He does have the Unbreakable. Well, he is gonna pop in. They're gonna try and turn it around. Cyclone in the back line. They're trying to convert him down, but they are surviving Rocket. ever so slightly. Rocket lands. That's two. That's two that they need. But Catamatics might have enough, but look who is here. Constant is ready to go. Yes, that is three dead. Yes, the Olaf is still alive, but look how low they are. Again, the one that they really want to take out is Constant, and they cannot. Still, three for one in favor of Park, but this is the downside dragon. Charles says, listen, you got the kills. We get the permanent buff. First Infernal Soul of this tournament will be secured. You know what, overall? Let's go Park Esports. You weren't gonna get the dragon anyways. I think you go, you want the fought, the fight. That's the bigger thing right now because baby steps, right? You've lost mm. the dragon, that's fine, that's gone. But at least you didn't get wiped, you can still fight back. And I think a lot of that came out from the fact that they forced Constant over the wall in the first place. It looked like a 4v5 and I think Grid actually wins 4v5s, but not without the Draven. And there wasn't the damage coming through from that. East Phantom was taken out so quickly in that fight as well. Just no sustained damage. And that's what Park just needs to do is find their way into the back line. And for that now, I'm looking for Xerix and Goon to start getting creative. Find ways to get behind them. And a lot of that is going to start with Vision. Because if they see you coming, they're going to disengage or just turn and kill you. They're going to turn. They're going to try and burn here. Rise go so far has also farmed up a little bit. 176 in the inventory. Still working on the second item. A little bit further in. But look, this is the first time you get to really see that Infernal Soul taking a toll. And I think the one that you're really going to see it on is Catamatics. Those lasers, those beams are going to slice through your health bar like a hot knife through butter. Lane, the nice thing is open. that there is a cooldown on it. So at least, you know, once you mm -hmm. take the poke. If yeah, you yeah, it's, it, uh, I think it's like one second is the cooldown. But you know what's now <laughs> on cooldown is the solo player. They're going to try and give it all. Again, the Wombo Combo is there. It. They're going to slow it down a little bit just to see. And they don't. They it's don't find the kill. Crit with this dragon are going to steamroll the fight. They are barreling towards the Nexus. One more axe almost catches. Macarena on the back end. The reset is there. Misses by a corner. Come on. Hit those shots, you can't go wide, right? One more shot, that's in the Those ultimate use, and it's new! The Zanyas, beautiful, glorious, a little bit of a turn though, that is gonna be the kill. That is the second ace of the game. Charles will pay for his <laughs> overaggression, but it was worth. Grid Esports will go ahead, they will take the Infernal Soul, they will take the Inhibitor, and they will take the Nexus Towers. Grid Esports 2-0. Go ahead and win third place here at the Unified Esports Association's uh, LAN League of Legends tournament. Valkyries coming down to be able to take uh, the Olaf home there. That That is a worthy death going down that <laughs> way. Making sure you, you get the clean sweep. And Park, honestly, they, it showed so much more signs of life in that last game. It was actually looking like they could turn it, but 
grid five decided to group up properly. And you could see that yeah. they actually protected their AD carries in the last fight. <laughs> that was something we didn't see coming through. And then East Phantom suddenly gets the free fire. And we talked about the fact that a paleo skill is really, really well as well. Wasn't punished for the most part there. So able to come back and constant support on this Draven. I love Draven. I love constant support playing Draven. <laughs> it was phenomenal. I, I I was watching it and it's just like, yeah, get the kill, get the kill, get the kill. Go, 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 go. <laughs> And then I and you pointed out them protecting the ADCs. They didn't just protect one. They didn't pick and choose like most teams would. Normally, you would see, hey, okay, prioritize this ADC, prioritize this other. No, 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 no. They protected both at the same time, and we got to see double ADC go into action. Yes, it was unorthodox, but it worked for them, and they go ahead take it home. So congratulations to them. We will most likely get an interview with the winning squad, so we will see Grid Esports go ahead, probably be on screen here as we go to a very quick break. Get ready for our finals series between Tiger Cubs and Return of the Middle Six. You won't want to miss it.
Hello everyone, I am JT Displays, along with me is constant support, the ADC that said welcome to the League of Draven on the grid team that won third place. Congratulations on third place. How does it feel uh, being up on stage and competing for third place like that? Man, it feels awesome. It's a great opportunity to be able to come out here and uh, be able to play with such competitive teams and be able to see such great players. Uh, I really enjoyed it and it was awesome. Yeah, love to see it. Like obviously, like that Draven play there, uh, the third that that level three dive onto the under the tower. There, you had you had some pretty impressive plays there yourself. Uh, as far as your experience all weekend here, like what was really would you say uh, a highlight for you? Uh, just uh, being here at the land. Um, it has amazing sights. Like uh, I'm from a small town, so being able to come to Kansas City and see such a big stadium and see like such amazing um, people and buildings and all that it's not i'm not used to it you know so it's it's really cool and it was a great experience have you ever been to kansas city before um yeah a few times but this is a pretty new experience for me for the most part like yeah this was really cool yeah i mean i would say like as far as uh children's mercy park and sporting kansas city uh really great organization they really invest a lot back into the city so i'm really glad that we have are able to have this esports festival right here uh with uea here at Children's Mercy Park. Uh, beyond that, though, of course, the fierce competition. Uh, we've got, uh, you know, that uh, first place match that, you know, is coming up as well. That I'm, I'm sure, are you excited to see that as well? Oh, uh, yeah, we're going to be watching it. We're going to be uh, rooting for our team that we think will be better. But, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Do, do, do you have a team you think is, is going to be, uh, you, you, you've got, you're rooting for? Who, who you think is the favorite coming into this this matchup? There's a team that beat us that has, like, the, the previous challenger players and the math man. They destroyed us. I mean, I have to root for them. I think they got this. Hey, fair enough. Like, yeah, like that's and that's what's great about like esports. Like, hey, like you absolutely slobber knocked me out on the pitch there. But hey, you know, you guys are great, and like I can't wait to see how you progress. And that's one of the the camaraderie, the sportsmanship, right? Yeah, hundred percent. It's. I mean, I don't like it, but I mean, yeah, hundred percent. No, I I completely understand that. Uh, constant support, of course. Uh, your team. Um, do you guys have any other plans after this one? What's, uh, what's the future look for, like for you, for the grid here? Um, well, we want to do a lot more tournaments and we want to put ourselves out there a lot more and, you know, get a lot more exposure. So, um, we're just hoping to do a lot more tournaments, get in a lot more different leagues and participate more often. Well, a little birdie did tell me that there might be a UEA uh, tournament up in Nebraska at the end of the uh, month there, uh, some, somewhere in that July area where so yeah you might 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 be on the lookout for that keep keep your eye out on the twitter uh there for that but uh any constant any last uh any last words any any want to shout anyone you want to shout out here um the production team they did a great job the uh the stadium like this area is awesome you guys did a great job with that um the grid team the amazing people and uh they sponsor or you know we're their team and yeah other than that nothing else really Absolutely. And uh, last question. Have you had uh, any Kansas City barbecue yet? And if you haven't, do you need any suggestions? Uh, we actually went to barbecue yesterday for lunch and dinner. So, yeah, uh, no, I think we're going to suggestions. We, <laughs> we had some pretty good stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. Awesome. Love to hear it. Well, for con support, I am JT Displays. Back to you guys. We will see you guys after this br brief break for that League of Legends finale.
And welcome back, everyone. We are here after that fantastic interview with the third place winning team. It was great to see their expectations and kind of happiness about it. That's what these lands are all about. We are here with the Unified Esports Association Sporting KC LAN here at Children's Mercy Park, which once again, we are here out in Kansas City, Kansas. It has been a blast having so many people come out and also young and old enjoying their time here, kind of learning also what esports kind of is. So it's been great. We've had so many events both up here on the fourth floor plus third and first we had free play i think down below we had a super smash brothers tournament 17 20 people showed up it was a blast i heard people cheering from up here i'm pretty sure uh might be exaggeration but still it was a fantastic time hopefully you can see it as well but we are going into the finals here you know these two teams you love these two teams and it's return of the middle six versus tiger cubs and we saw both these teams yesterday they looked really individually strong you know i feel like they're having some fun we did not notably see a middle sticks from return of the middle sticks it is not yet banned and i still have great hopes that we do get to see it today in the grand finals no less oh yeah if they do i will definitely do some push-ups i'll do dances i'll do whatever it needs <laughs> because i love it i love seeing uh this team this is one that i actually knew back from i think 2015 when i was still playing uh Gosh, those were the dark ages. But uh, it was fantastic. This is a team that's well known here in KC specifically as just 
I think, a great group of guys that just enjoy the game. Uh, and it's awesome to see him here playing. And so let's go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of this. Draven, Viego, and Aurelia. High priority champ is taken off the table. Flip side, Kled, Leeson, and Zin Zhao. And then instead of the Karma or Lulu, it's actually the Leona. So a lot of teams starting to prioritize that hard CC instead of shielding and buffing. Yeah, and I'm a little bit surprised to see the Leona picked up quite this early here. We've been seeing it paired, you know, with things like the Draven there. I was going to say, you, you want hard engage, generally. Things that can follow up and put up damage. Tristana was probably top of that list here. But that's taken away by Tiger Crumbs. Immediately paired with that Thresh as well. A lot of safety taken away. I mean, you can still go with things like the Varus, for example. You stack that Hill of Blades and you actually do an amazing amount of damage early on with those Blight stacks. That, however, I mean, that's an... an I don't know if I, I quite trust it yet. It, it does a lot of damage. We've seen it at World at uh, MSI, pardon me. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, I, I didn't think you'd pick it quite that early. That's more of a counter pick. <laughs> I mean, if you're talking about counter picks, you don't pick it on blue side then. You really can't unless you see the enemy side mid. But what we do see here... Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. If they do, I almost tripped. Oh, my lord. If they do pick this, <laughs> I'll be very happy as well. It's in a Yordle. It's one of these two. If they do, I will love them forever. They're only hovering it. So if it's locked in, I will also be very, very happy. I love Zig Ziggs as my... Yes! Yes! <laughs> yes! Orbital's dreams are coming true today. My guy picked up. reason I carried Ziggs him around. Up. <laughs> I love, I love this so much, and I'm so happy because even Ziggs has started to become meta. I love him to death. He was so bad for like six years in a row, <laughs> and he finally came back into the action. So welcome back, Ziggs. Problem is you're facing up against a Jasana Thresh and a Camille. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, the strength of, the, of your range is still very potent, is still there, and the Camille is going to have to get uh, a little bit fancy to try and find that Ziggs in the back of that Hextech ultimatum. Mm. We do see the Olaf uh, ban coming out here. They want to deny it. I mean, you already have a very potent top laner or potential mid laner even with that Renekton here. If you give something like an Olaf, you definitely can control the 2v2s there. Galio coming back out of uh, return of the middle sticks, pardon me. And they want to make sure you don't get that Camille Galio combo that used to run the show at the beginning of season one. Yeah, and just trying to stave off of that dive composition. So very, very true there. RMC, now we're getting into the last few bands. The Diana still targeting that jungle saying return of the middle six. You have a Wombo as well. We cannot allow you to capitalize on that. If this is a direct target ban, I would be very, very surprised. I feel the Nidalee was okay. Well, it showed off very, very well, but it's not a champion that I think you have to ban. I feel like there are alternatives to kind of dealing with it. So this this would be a huge respect ban, uh, ban over to Moody's. Yeah, and I mean, we did see that banned against Moody's before. This year makes much more sense, especially when you've got the Renekton for Return of the Middle Six. You can pick the Nidalee yourself, and then you oh, can no. kind of run with that, land the, <laughs> land the Renekton uh, spear. Oh my goodness, has, has JT been talking to the teams? Is I this that Soraka I Mundo that he wanted us to, to try and promote here? <laughs> nah, this 10 is... seconds of the pick. No, okay, <laughs> here's the thing. If you're gonna do that, go Yumi Mundo. Don't go Soraka, <laughs> go Yumi, man. That's more obnoxious. But it won't be that particular kitty here. It is gonna be nearly picked up once again for Moody's. You don't have the same setup as the Renekton affords, but we've seen Moody's on it anyways before. It's, it's a solid pick. It does a lot of damage. Then one spear, you win the fight. It, remind, uh, it reminds me of so many funny things. I think there were compositions in the past where you literally only have one tank and four healing supports, and you just let the tank roll in through all the lanes. That was the days of old Soraka, which was Soraka mid. So that is that tells you how old I am. So taking a look at the junglers here, we are moving through the Hecarim coming out, going to be flying out and running everyone over. And then it's going to be the Rise. So that is the Ziggs APC in the bottom lane. I can't dance then because Ziggs mid is my guy. They kind of mess it up. No, no, not their fault. Ziggs still in game. <laughs> so, Rise coming out. That is going to be the blind pick for that mid lane. We'll see what Tiger Cubs have to offer. Yeah, and Rise is one of those safer blind picks, right? You've got great wave clear, uh, quite a bit of safety here. Good skill in the prompts just that you surrender a lot of your initiative in the early game. You can't really rotate out. Cassiopeia being picked to match, and that was an old school matchup. We used to see two really great scalers. They both have similar ranges as uh, champions here, and it really comes down to can you land that petrifying gaze as the Cassiopeia. If you can't, Rise is going to run you over. If you can, you win the trade. It's very, very high risk, high reward in that particular matchup. And overall, I do you know want to talk about that Ziggs AP carry in the ball lane. I know you're not happy with it, but it's where we're seeing Ziggs. I don't think we've seen a, a Ziggs mid all tournament. It's always been in that bot lane so far. 
And paired with that Leona here, the kill potential is not quite as high as with something like a Draven or a Tristana. But what you can do is first of all poke down and then engage or let your Leona roam free. Go to the mid lane, go to the top lane, go work with that Hecarim here. Your Ziggs is going to be able to wave clear from a fairly safe range and shouldn't be at too big a risk of being dove, especially with that Nidalee we can't land the spear. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an opportunity to see more craziness. And, and again, name very fitting, x Craze. If he's able to roam, if he's able to influence the rest of the lanes, we could see a lot more uh, chaos to follow. And it's something that I have loved to see so far. It's the push and pull. Whoever initiates the craziness first, the rest of the team is sure to follow. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And eventually, if it keeps snowballing down that hill, you jump off a cliff and it's just mass chaos eventually you get like a kill a minute you are just absolutely not understanding what's going on no one cs in about 15 minutes and you're wondering why everyone is sitting in double digits it's crazy i love it so much uh but of course these are a lot more standard than we have seen before so i want to get your opinion mid to late game we know there are different power spikes on every single side your opinion here i mean who is really coming out with the victory or I would say win conditions, not victory, because that is always up. Win condition-wise, which is easier to execute uh, between these two teams? I feel like it's slightly easier for the side of Return of the Middle Sticks, just because they've got the earlier, uh, the, the slightly better early game here with that Leona, Hecker, and Renekton. Um, in sort of all the lanes there, you've got great gank assist, and you can set up a lot to happen. So I feel like they've got the edge in the early game, and that should lead into a better mid game. That said, if they don't find the leads early, because we've seen Tiger Cubs basically run over every single lane in every single game. They just don't lose lane. And if that becomes the case, then things get a lot dicier. And I don't think anybody has a particular edge. They just have different win conditions here. Return of the middle sticks, you know, they're just looking to get the poke down from the Ziggs and then look for the engage. And they've got easier engage tools with the Leona, with the Renekton to force things. You've got the Realm Warp for the macro as well. Tiger Cubs, on the other hand, they're probably not looking to be quite as aggressive and look for the end gauge. It's a, more, a lot more about counterplay here with the spears to poke out and then with that Cassiopeia, you're trying to sort of get the petrifying gaze on to the priority targets on the end gauge, poke them down once you take 1% off the fight, then you turn on in. So slightly different win cons and it all comes down 100% to execution here. Can Return of the Middle Sticks find their engage? Can Tiger Cubs find their picks? It's going to be the uh, things we need to watch for. So definitely keep eyes on that. How do these teams show up? Because again, this is the finals. These are the two teams that are playing for that first place in game one. Really sets the standards. We got the Ziggs. Of course, we're excited. We saw a Vagar last game. I mean, my champions are out. All I need is a Zareth now. All I need is a Zareth, and I will be completely happy for the rest of the game. Uh, rest of the day, of course. But we will go into a very short break. Make sure the teams are ready for this and enjoy their time here at the UEA LAN event. So make sure to stay tuned. We'll be right back with game number one between the return of the middle six versus Tiger Cubs.
And we are back. Of course, it is the finals, and I am excited to bring it to you once again. We have Return of the Middle Six over there on blue side. And of course, we got George hopping into the rift alongside Tiger Cubs as they are on the red side. And it's going to be a great time here on the rift. Again, we already saw the fourth and third seeds playing it out in the third place match. Now it is the second and first coming out today. Okay, and for those of you who are con con kind of confused by the portraits you see on the left side, R R uh, Return of the Middle Six, they like to swap up their players all the time. So Sapachi not playing AD Carry, playing Renekton in the top lane this time, Kuplu going into the mid lane, and uh, we are seeing Farlight as AD Carry and X Craze down into the support. So everything's been, you know, switched up, everything's fine, but the lane matchups themselves are not that crazy. It is what we expected. It will be Ryzen to Cassiopeia, Renekton to Camille, and Ziggs Leona into that Tristana Thresh. I think it reminds me of that time in the LEC. I forgot which player it was, but there was a single player that I think had in his contract that if he ever played against perks in the bot lane, I think, that he would swap from mid to ADC to play against him <laughs> in that singular game. And it happened. Every, everyone on the broadcast test was so, so confused, but he did it. He, I think he lost, but it was still a glorious sight to behold. If, if you're gonna do that between these two teams, they should have fire light match up against fire theft. Just because your no, names are so no, similar. you are making me gonna be tongue tied. That is that is so rude to say. You have now planted that seed in their head. This is oh no, oh no. I'll be but... right there with you, Orbital. And, and right now we are seeing some trading happen up top. So Pachi expected to win this early as the Renekton here and is trading a bit favorably. The Camille fire theft, no flash, running the ignite as we have come to expect from Camille's. Yep, it is the standard, and I think Fire Theft is one of the members that uh, has been consistently destroying, uh, or, or at least taking over that top side, right? He has been a majority shareholder in really showing us how top lane should be played and how you dominate from that lane itself. So, level two's up right now. Last time, I think we did see a Renekton Camille set up. The Renekton actually did okay. This time, though, even pacing in the leveling pretty much everywhere. I mean, Renekton should be winning, and the fact that Fire Theft is winning out these trades speaks a lot to his ability to play the lane here. As you mentioned, junglers did start bot. They are looking top here, and it does look like Zadox might get there a little bit ahead because of the Krugs, but Tsubashi's taking so much damage early. Ooh. Again, that's the, that's the summoner difference right there, right? Flash, a defensive summoner versus the aggressive, and Zadox is now gonna look for a little bit more. Hey, that's a that's a horse versus a cat, guys. I don't know if that's what you really wanna take. They both say, all right, both have their ups and downs. Let's just not deal with it. And I love the fact that normally when we see these junglers meet, a lot of times we do see like the other lanes come in and help. So it's not exactly a 1v1. But in this case, both top laners based, both of them just TP <laughs> back. Mid lane, Riverside just went back to base, TP back as well. Kuplu just a beat behind. So it felt like three separate 1v1s happening. And as I say that, Moody's is still there with Zadox. We can get both the 1v1s and the 3v3. Yeah, the problem is the Sapachi actually rotated faster. And you could probably see that was a call by Fire Theft saying he had no way to leave. Considering that wave was like about 10 CS strong, right? You cannot miss that amount of CS and experience. Specifically just a fight over a Scuttle. It, it is just not, I want to say mathematically worth it. 
Yeah, no, and not to mention, you've got to walk through part of the wave as well, tanking their damage to all come all the way down. You'll come back, lower health, and you just TP back in lane. You can't afford to do that. Without the Ignite, though, Sopachi might be lower on health, but Firetha has to be more careful. You don't have quite the same kill potential onto this Renekton who can heal up. You do, however, have a bit of level lead, and that's why we're seeing Firetha bully out Sopachi a little bit. Just a touch right there, and... Already Rise having some fun with the combos. Not exactly the machine gun Rise, but you know, a quick uh, semi auto fire there. Jungler still doing it out. Zadok having a bit of a problem as mid lane. The true machine gun is the Cassiopeia. A little bit of swipe by the claws, though. The jungler is still going at it. Over the wall, they go in extra. Flashing, and remember the flash follows. Oh, this is dangerous. Moody's not having a good time, and they might be able to get the kill. There it is. Oh, First blood. ROTM decide that they are ready to go hunting. One more auto's like, no, it's not going to go down. They live. Double kill for ROTM as they secure the early game kills. Return of the middle six here just by a hair and Zadox getting it. Recall back to the last time we saw these two teams play. Zadox on, I believe, I can't remember what chat. Was it uh, Kha'Zix maybe? I just remember he was a jungler and he stole away Baron. It's, yes, he's no. a really, really good jungler. And now he's got the 2-0 to start as well. He's going to be able to roam to different lanes, get the snowball going. So Pachi in that lane has been struggling a little bit in the 1v1. Zadox can change that bot side. x trace Farlight, they've been passively farming. They've been falling behind. Again, Zadox can change that. Yes, he can. And it's... I love it so much, just seeing this level of aggression, because you mentioned it all the way at the beginning, right? The whole reason that you do pick Ziggs is sometimes you can just play safe. You can enable that Leona to roam, to cause chaos, to cause absolute terror and help your team. That's literally what happened. I've never seen someone call it that cleanly, is he just roamed and got two kills for it, and the Ziggs barely suffered so very very clean play now it's top lane certain fire that's looking like he is about to get pounced on again no flash can't chase it down yes he can now he's gonna hook oh, shot gets down against the wall looks like he might die no a little bit under the tower and the level six hit meant that the hextech ultimatum would have been deadly under the tower yeah and they also know that they've got a timer basically right before the lane starts to respond we saw riverside looking to come up fire theft is baiting now moody's waiting Oh, but the spear lands on a minion, but I still think that they can take it. Yeah, that's going to be a swipe of claws. Moody picks up his first. Now the Hecarim might be turned into Swiss cheese. Can't make it happen. Last with a little <laughs> bit of an emote. And again, he's the one that suffered. His top laner did fall. Good sidestep from Zadox to make sure that they didn't give over a double here. And I feel for Sapachi because Zadox was supposed to be the one to ch change the lane for him there. They win out the trade and then... Moody shows up and that top lane just goes from bad to worse. And here's the thing with your jungler as well. If you're even or slightly ahead or behind, your jungler will come and gank for you. But once you fall too far behind, your jungler is likely to abandon your lane because you're likely to feed a kill over even if you trade one for one, it's not worth. So I find that Sopachi's window closed and Zadox now likely to look more for Kuplu, more for Firelight and X-Trace on the bot side to try and make things happen. Might have to make it work. And I mean, those are the ones that you already looked at, right? Uh, already after that first play, I'm expecting to see even more action. But so we here on the bot side, level 5 Firelight, level 4 X-Craze, level 5 on both possibly and Tai Chi. Oh, no. As well. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is scary. Tai Chi, tai Chi got left. <laughs> Everyone left Tai Chi. And that's going to be possibly trying to run interference. All right. All right. That's worth That's worth Oh. No! That, no! That is what oh. <laughs> I thought it was over! I thought it was over, and Zadox impresses me again and again. That's. Oh my gosh. And that was effectively a solo there from Zadox onto yes. Taichi. I mean, we, we didn't mention it, but this isn't the Ghost Smite Hecarim that we normally see. It's Ignite. He's looking for some X craze, looking for. Or actually, just running straight into Moody's here. Moody's isn't winning this. Though he's not. Uh, actually, X-rays might have a little bit of a difference, but the minefield isn't going to land on final satchel does land. If that were level six, actually, Firelight is level six. It is he does not have it? Sorry, that is already down. A little bit of satchel out, and the flash over. Oh, possibly flays just out of that direction. That if that landed, that would have been a kill. Oh, this might be a sacrifice. X-rays might have to sacrifice to keep his uh, tail alive, Ooh. and that shield. Actually, I think that shield would have saved uh, the buff W. Would have been enough to power through, but not able to. Tai Chi, looking up one.
You know what? Uh, X Grace MVP on that play right there. You could see the hesitation too. He was like, uh, do I go back in? Farlight, can you make it? Okay, we're not sure. I will sacrifice myself. That's what good supports do. And Farlight, you know, survives 1-0. Helps to even up that little lane a bit. They do, however, lose that first Drake. Cloud Drake coming through and top side. They're trying to answer and fire. Fight. Yes, they are. And I mean, all of a sudden, return of the middle six. Go into town here. Sapachi with the predicting flash is able to make it work. And what in the world? We are watching it. Look at this trade directly in the minion wave. And Sapachi goes ahead. Watch, watch where he goes. He knows it's going to go as soon as he knows the direction. Flash oh. in front and he cannot get away. I I wonder if that was a little bit overkill because again fire that has no flash but I think it was definitely worth you know, you know what? J just for the satisfaction for Sapachi to know that he just shafted Fire Theft after the be beating was taken, <laughs> worth. But on, but also, they might not have been able to catch up to that. You leave Kuplu behind to block if he wants to jump back, and Sapachi to block the front so that he can't go anywhere. Great play. And return of the middle six. They're really taking control of this game. x just keeps roaming here, hasn't hit six, and has already had so much impact. Once x is six, I think they're going to regret intensely on the side of Tiger Cubs not running cleanse on multiple members here. Riverside Tai Chi, that solar flare has your name on it. It's it's basically going to be a target, right? Just straight up, anytime the cooldown is up, it is just going to be, can I land this airstrike of a stun on you? It is going to be ridiculous. And I just want to talk about the level of aggression uh, Return of the Middle Six is bringing, right? This is a level of aggression that you don't actually normally see. Right? This is excessive, to say the least. Consistent roaming from x Cray, Consistent fighting on the top side. Zadox is not waiting. He is saying, hey, if you're good, uh, I'm here to gank. Let's make it happen. Cool. Play it off. And I don't think TGC have been ready for it. No, and, and it feels excessive. But if you look in terms of the farm right now, Zadox is keeping dead even. He's able to get everywhere he needs to be at first. And then those ganks fuel gratuitous because it's just so oh, many. Yeah, but that's going to be a trade. Oh. And again, Riverside, we saw him do Taichi it before. Though. That's going to be the jump in. And that's unfortunately Taichi down. But most crucially, Riverside made a clutch play in a situation where we know that TGC are down a little bit. If it Outside. weren't for that unfortunate jump in, that would have been a huge play. Top side, that is a dive as well. Man, return to the middle six. I said it before, I'll say it again. Once you start the aggression snowball, it is gonna come right back from the enemy team. The Tiger Cubs aren't just gonna lie over and take this here. They will fight back and really good dive top side in terms of getting Sopachi so low that the Dominus really didn't even matter even if he did opt to pop it. Riverside, now looking mid and Moody's lands the spear. Yeah, it lands the spear, but immediately gets charged on. Zadox is ready and willing, oh, but now the fight is in. They're breaking out Moody's. Moody's can't win, and they're going to turn it. Return to the middle six. They're going to town here in mid. It was initiated by Tiger Cubs, but that's return to the middle six. Firing right back. They will take two and take the mid lane tower as a reward. Yo, x craze right now is absolutely nutty in the roams. The Leona just seems to be <laughs> everywhere, and half the time we don't even see them coming. Like, we're looking at this fight mid, the, the mid laners are there, the junglers are there, and suddenly x Craze pops out of nowhere, gets kills left and right as well. Zadox, though, 6 and 0 oh right now. The majority, two-thirds of the team's kills, and it is kills well-placed. I didn't think of Hecarim as necessarily being the big carry for the team when you've got a Rise, when you've got a Ziggs here, but Zadox is making it work, and he's making tracks all around the map. Even this top side where Fire Theft has had a stranglehold over the lane is not safe. We've seen Kuplu roam up. I want to see Zadox continue to punish this uh, Camille who's constantly extending herself. That, you know, you say we don't expect the Hecarim to. Zadox definitely expected to be the carry, right? You look at his Ida, or you look at his runes and you look at his summoner spells. He expected to be in the middle of the fight. Normally you see uh, a Hecarim with, I think it's the phase rush plus the ghost that's like the key style because you're just initiating you run in and that's about it he is playing a sticky style of composition and it means so much like he expected this kind of outcome true he was definitely coming here ready to brawl and it is panning out tai chi in the bot lane getting completely forced out of lane and we talked about the fact that x craze roamed early and firelight fell a little bit behind but not too too far behind possibly roaming right now just cost tai chi a turret because without that thresh available you have to be so scared for these force plays for these force ganks even if thresh was there it's still kind of dicey 
Yeah, you... <clears throat> so everything that you think about that you know about a bot lane, like, I think what happened is like, yeah, okay, you're gonna be fine. They can't take the last plate. Ziggs is a turret buster. That is what he is designed to do. And you saw it, the satchel, the only real... Outside of a rune, outside of a, a, a keystone, it is the only ability in the game that chunks that heavily on a percentage of a tower, right? The other one is, I believe, the Demolisher. Uh, that's the only one that can do a chunk of a tower's health outside of consistent damage. So you roam, you're like, oh, it's fine. You forget as Ziggs is in the game, and you're like, we just lost a lot. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, really rough. We do see Sapashi now being sent to that bot lane now that the turret has fallen. No teleport is available, though, and they're Ooh. looking for Riverside. Yeah, but x is a little bit further ahead than the rest of his team. That's oh, going to be possible to actually right. save him alive. x had the right idea there, just not enough follow-up. Remember, the dragon is up. This is going to be the second of the game, and ROTM do not want to give away. Ocean, very, very crucial to keeping your team alive, whether mid, early, or late. They're gonna go ahead and pick it up and we will see which dragon it is. Hey! All right! Oh. The gods of right have said it is time. Another infernal soul will be there and this is gonna be a fight over the wall. A Justana solo kill. The fear is there. It can he get over the wall? No, one more auto attack is there. That is it. That is Zadox taking, I believe, his seventh or eighth. Run, a man possibly. is run. invincible. Lee has to run away. I think he has a speed of boots. Yes, he has cooldown reduction boots. So yes, completed second tier. But still, my gosh, ROTM, they get the dragon, they follow up with an aggressive Realm Warp up, and are continuing to pressure 10 to 5. There is not a team here that put Tiger Cubs in this situation so far in the tournament. Yeah, Tiger Cubs won every single time in their lanes here. It's not happening this time here. Well, we should qualify that. They are up CS in all their lanes so far, and the one, the only one that's kind of really going toe-to-toe -to -toe is Kublu. We saw that Firelight versus Taichi, Firelight loses that fight every single time. The Tristana bomb is apparently bigger than Ziggs bombs. And in the top <laughs> lane, Fire Theft continues to dominate. 0-1 and 2 still beating Sapachi here. And that is actually re Return of the Middle Sticks who had to rotate their top laner away there to avoid the fight. But that's only CS. Gold tells a different story. Mid jungle, Zadox is well in ahead here. Almost 2,000 up. And that's really why it hasn't felt like Tiger Cubs is winning because Zadox isn't restricted to a lane and he can reinforce everyone else. And again, it, it also goes into his build, right? You just sit there and you're like, this is a Hecarim that knows he's going to stay alive for a while. You feel confident. It bolsters the rest of your squad to say, hey, we can follow up. Our Zadox is not going to die very quickly. He's not going to pop kind of where he stands, right? So it breathes a sign of life into this competition and now we get to see what tiger cubs can do right you have to question how are you going to come back into this game you're waiting for cassiopeia which again getting an assist was very very big and is a big scaler but you have to watch for that momentum shift you are a little bit worried about how, how it situates fire theft going ahead taking down the bottom tower top lane is not going to go down is it all right there goes the statue i was wondering about that if he was going to stick around that was the help from kaplu to just ensure that they stay ahead of the tower game. But that was a tall play. They used x craze looking for the dive top as Fire Theft, Fire Theft threatening yep. Sopachi once again here. TP coming in top side. Yep, and they're going to bounce it out. Riverside, it is going to chase this one down. x craze oh, it's going to get slowed down. I think that's going to be the kill. Moody finishes it off with a spear. I, I'm going to be a little bit hesitant about that. I will say I do wish that I'd gone onto one of the other carries, but still, kill is a kill, and Nidalee is going to be doing damage. Hey man, at this point, x craze you don't take risks. If you take too long to put in <laughs> maybe they turn it around. You don't know who's in their back pocket. It's been working out really well thus far. That's it. Again, x craze dying to get the rest of the team out. Because Return of the Middle Six overextends a little bit in that top side, trying to make that play. And they had vision of, of uh, Riverside moving away from that mid lane with Moody's. They were pushing the wave up. And when that wave crashed, you saw them leaving. So you roughly knew they were coming there. Just not paying sufficient respect firelight. Oh, like, no. Okay. The, the safety satchel. I'm going to call that the safety satchel from now on. It doesn't matter what you do. It's literally anytime anyone gets close or within like a 300 unit proximity, you're just like, no, I'm going to I'm gonna drop this and just be ready to bounce out. Yeah. And, and at this point, I don't even trust the flash. Uh, like It's not yeah. going to be good enough. If Taichi's there, if Riverside is there, the burst damage they can provide is pretty n nasty here. And if mm -hmm. any ignite is available, whether it be from possibly or fire theft, it's pretty much a guaranteed kill. We should, however, Orbital at this point be entering a bit more of a lull phase as we do see a lot of the turrets kind of down here. The only sort of outer turret left standing is Return of the Middle Sticks mid lane turret. 
And it's kind of what's slowing down the pace of the game because Tiger Cubs are struggling to push into that. They don't have a great siege just yet, and they need Tai Chi to be able to free fire. Baron coming up in a minute and a half here, and Dragon in a minute is more likely where we're going to see that action because of that Infernal Drake, because of the potential Infernal Stow. Both these teams really want to stack that for their poke, whether it be from the Nidalee or from the Ziggs or from the Cassiopeia. Oh, you know what looks like it is great for dinner. It is a snake somehow, but that's going to be the Dark Pack perfectly played. I, mm, I want to say that is the most perfect play a Thresh has done here today. Read like a book, knew someone was going to come down. It was like, Riverside, I know you're going to overstay, so I'm going to stay to help you. Yeah, and good thing they did as well. And that's what you kind of need to do at this point, right? Your safe side pushers are the Camille, the Renekton, maybe the Tristana. Definitely not the Cassiopeia. She doesn't have the mobility here. And speaking of that Renekton and Camille, it's not going well for Sapachi still. Both of them have teleported up, but that level lead has now become a two-level lead, and Fire Theft is just running all over this block now. Midlane tower is down. That's two in the mid, and unfortunately they don't get a second charge, but they have broken it up enough that uh, they are putting question marks into the enemy jungle, right? TGC are not allowed to roam here without caution. Without fire theft, that is going to be very difficult. So it looks like this dragon will be forfeited over into Return of the Middle Six Pocket. And Tiger Cubs, they're okay with this. It's not the best situation for them, but Tristana is scaling up, and she will soon start to outrange everybody except the Ziggs poke, and she outranges Ziggs general ja damage. Camille is becoming an unstoppable split push threat, and Sopachi is not getting any better. The Renekton is starting to fall off here, and as long as you know the Realm Orb's down, the TP is down from Kuplu, there's just no response. We already see that top lane inner turret is very, very low because of Fire Theft. This is a wonder of wonders, and, it, and it's such a contrast to their uh to their matchup back in the group stage right it feels like that was almost a, a fever dream but the current standing that we're having right these teams are almost evenly matched last time i think it was straight up tiger cubs running straight yep. through him right like it, it was very much an overwhelming show of might and yet here uh riverside is having a little bit of time has hit two item power spike though that Cassiopeia will be throwing a lot of damage their way i'm even wondering so last time we saw i think riverside play Cassiopeia. It went into third item Rylize, I want to say. However, yeah. I, I think that's a lot more aggressive item as Rylize has been kind of nerfed. It used to have a really nice synergy with Leandri's. So now I think it's something more of the burn damage. Oh no, Fire Theft has found a cheeky Yordle. Not in the right place. A flash out. A good call as Zadax is right there, ready and waiting. Hookshot oh, out. Wow. They're calling a teleport? I'm yeah, not so sure that's in a realm. Of oh my god. Really Have you it. ever seen a team say we are done oh. with your crap? Fire that can't get over the wall. And Zadox takes a kill. We thought it was overkill. We thought it wasn't gonna be enough, but it was definitely needed. Fire Theft is down. Yeah, <laughs> Return of the Middle Six just got sick of it. Zadox continuing on the hunt here, and you can see everybody's scared there. Without Riverside and the Petrifying Gaze, they're not confident about being able to take this. They aren't. But the poke is there, right? You see a hook go out, you see a little bit of damage, and that's going to be a snap over the wall. Blast Cone is used. We're going to go for it. The questions are there. Remember, 10 seconds until Fire Thight comes up. He does have Teleport, so this has to be done quickly. ROTM need to keep eyes on that. A little bit of a dark vision there for the side of TGC. We'll see in an RTM are there. Tai Chi's. Oh, go ahead. The fire, fire light is almost out, but it's huge. Benchmark Gaze catches two into the back of the go. Onslaught of Shadows is there, fire but it's a back. zone. Zadox is one. He is staying alive. He stays alive just in time, but the Tristana oh. is laying into him. Hook from out of nowhere. That is going to be X Cray's life, and that is it. Tiger comes. Fire back. Fire light is going to go low, and he is out of that jungle. Tiger Cubs find a fight at one of the most crucial moments of the game. Mega Inferno Bomb is almost up here. You're unlikely to steal, but maybe you can find some kills on the back line. Firelight walking back up, laying down the poke. He wants it. He wants to try. No, they're going to chase him out. All right. Firelight's like, bro, I tried. Bomb, I tried. Bomb, bomb. Gonna go? Is it going to go in? Are they going to get it? No. Oh. Smite comes down. Again, that is the chain. If this was back uh, half a year ago, that would have been the steal. 100% that would have been the steal. I don't know, man. Firelight's not quite at the point where you've got all the damage yet. Hextech Alternator that's, that's and the Luna's Tempest. That's a little too ultimate, right? 
That That's is, a level yeah, two. Level two ultimate. Yeah, level. Yeah, uh, so that would have been level two. And remember, the smite would have been that high, right, from Moody's. Uh, at level thirteen, I would have to run the damage. I don't know off the top of my head I, which one would be. It would be dicey though, for sure. And yeah. even in that situation, it was kind of dicey. And hmm. it feels like all the advantages reven uh, return of the middle six had accrued throughout the game. It's kind of starting to slip away from them a little bit. Just from one fight, they went for that Baron. It was a risky call. They couldn't burn it fast enough. And suddenly, Fire Theft is back with the teleport. They win the fight. They're pushing in. Gold is in their favor as well here. And we talked about the fact that they want to find picks. They can find their picks. And Return of the Middle Sticks here, they want to play a bit more zone careful. But Firelight is so far behind. Two levels down. Only one and a half items compared to Taichi's two and a half that they're not in the best position to try and play that zone control game. Gonna be the Hexic ultimate and thrown down. Restless Squad is trying to move up again. This is the battle of the bot laners. Restless Squad is here. Spear lands on the horse and a hook draws. Redexter oh. right back in. Oh, that was the death sentence. It's true to the Got game, it. but the Mega Inferno Bomb is there and that's gonna force a jump out. TGC have to run away. Roman Orb is there. Are they gonna bring anyone? Yes, they do. Right on the edge. Uh, they might just turn on fire. That's again, he doesn't have much in the tank. Riverside, though, he really wants oh, it. Oh, oh Chris. Trace realizes this is not a good position to be in. This is now a 1v1 between Zadix and Fire Theft. I wonder who's going to win back in, back out, back on the flight. And then this is a trade. TGC want no Zadox wins it. Still, oh. Riverside and Boris. Snake versus Horse. Who wins? Oh Who wins the fight? Zadox is going to get Zadox! Zadox wins it. No man in the tank. It doesn't matter. Soul Survivor of the Bloodbath of 5 for 4. And ROTM will hopefully secure their third Drake of the game. Ladies and gentlemen, we <laughs> present you the Royal Rumble champion, Zedox. <laughs> the last man standing, the only survivor. He gets the dragon to boot as well. And all those kills they pumped in, it's coming to fruition here. 11, 1, and 2 after that. Tiger Cubs need to make sure they keep him out of the fight or they cannot win in equal numbers right now. That or actually put, I, I feel if that fight had started off a little bit differently, if Riverside was the one that was on a 1v1 with Sadox, that would have gone a different way. The only reason I say that is because of the melty damage that Riverside can put out. Fire Theft doesn't have as much as he would probably like, right? Yes, he has that 9.2, but the Hecarim <laughs> is starting to get tanky. And you can see across the board, right? 9k, 9.9 uh, .9 for the Nidalee, and then Justana, of course, 11,000 completely strong right now and really starting to burn down so these fights you can see they can go either way and i think it's props to the team for their targeting for the most part that we've seen tai chi not able to leverage that gold lead tai chi's not that far behind but tai chi keeps getting burst out early by everybody just targeting that tristana and same thing with farlight the ziggs has not really been able to participate too much in these two fights Oh Double my TV? gosh, Fire Theft. Fire Theft tried to initiate and that amazingly call, but they're gonna go in. Oh, that was a really far leap. That's I don't right. know if that's where Fire Theft. Like, no, that is so, so good for Return of the Middle Six, but that is so oh, dangerous. The side of Tiger Cubs. They're gonna keep firing though again. x Craze realizes that Riverside is very, very strong. The Melty might Alex? be there. Oh, but he's bounced right in. They're gonna try and turn around, make it for the bomb. That's gonna be it. Return of the Middle Six are trucks. Taichi gonna try and find it out. One more on like, is there. Can he get another one? No. The trades are good though. Three for two. Oh, that's gonna be the round worth. They're gonna jump in and it's enough. The range is there possibly. Gets around the corner. Spears fly true, lands on Sapachi. But remember, okay. Zadok, this is the Red one buff? you want to watch. The Spears, they mean nothing. They might as well be toothpicks. The horses on the charge. The cavalry oh. has been unleashed. And Zadox runs him down. He wants now a cat. He wants that pet in the ground. Not gonna happen though, because Dragon will be coming up in three minutes. They won the ensuing team fight again. Return to the middle six. This is looking more and more like they are in control. Zadox looks like a one-man army right now. The moment he showed up, everything went to hell in a hat basket for Tiger Cubs here. But I, I want to highlight again the instant TP from Kuplu to be able to match. And right now, it looks like if Kuplu and Riverside are in range of each other, Kuplu is winning that ever so slightly. And x is just not afraid to dive into buy time. 2v1, I, I don't think they win that against Zadox. I think Zadox still gets to run away, even in a 2v1 situation like that.
the buddy system is doing wonders for ROTM, right? Fire Theft, you can see Fire Theft getting antsier and antsier every single time. This has been the, I want to say, second time in the last two minutes that he has attempted to take a 1v1 trade and had to be extremely cautious of someone else in the back pocket. ROTM are playing this perfectly. They understand that Camille is a very strong champion. You just never let Fire Theft fight in a 1v1. That's it. You always bring two. You always force that. And he needs to start playing a little bit more safe. He needs to understand, maybe bring his own, as you did see Moody's, give it a shot. So the adjustments are being made literally on the fly for both these squads. Yeah, and and to be fair to Fire Theft, they're strong enough right now still that as long as they don't commit to this and Return of the Middle Sticks isn't sending three, four members, even Zadox can't really kill the Camille. You're just able to win the fight in that if Camille actually fights you. And Tiger Cubs are able to come back to the game. They're poised to do it. We already saw them win a fight at Baron and take that and really equalize things. They can do it again. Their key condition right now is keeping Tai Chi alive because there's a lot of gold on Tai Chi and Tai Chi's been killed early. And it's not Tai Chi's fault. You need to make sure there's sufficient peel, not just the Thresh here, but I think Riverside actually needs to start holding that petrifying gaze, that noxious miasma, to try and keep people from just jumping that back line. Yeah, it is. It's one of the few ultimates still left that can really lock down an entire team that well, right? You catch everyone looking uh, the wrong way, which is actually forward in this case, and that's going to be a chance. But we do get a little bit of a break from the action, see the lovely, lovely reindeer on top of a snow-covered house. Ward skins are amazing. I My personal favorite will always be the Coma skin. Uh, no matter what, Coma wins out overall. Little B, little angry about the spears landing. Uh, we've had so many land, and it, it's rough when you see that when Moody's is 5, 3, and 8, and a spear does maybe 100 damage. Yeah, and that's the thing with Nidalee. She does fall off here, and we we're talking about the fact that she doesn't have great CC to guarantee the spear landing from that Camille. From that Cassiopeia early, it's coming back to bite them here. Zadox positioning very aggressively. Oh. Realm Warp. <laughs> oh, the bait. You, you saw him step out immediately and was like, bro, no, no. But that is key. Remember that. That is key. Dragging up in 10 seconds, they went for a play. It didn't work. That Realm Warp they've used three to four times to reposition and catch TGC off guard. This might be the perfect chance. They know a flank can't really cure. They have it all warded. It's actually ROTM that won't have a chance to see the bottom side of the river. So TGC playing this so well in the vision game. Fire that stuff on the side track. And it started. He's gonna get close. He's gonna go with him. He went in. Hextech ultimate zoning everyone out. Smite is there. And they do get it. The dragon soul is denied. But the kills are coming through. Mega Inferno Bomb landing on so many moonies. Getting went slaughtered. In. And the Petrifying Gaze lands on no one! Riverside is going to have to fight for his oh, life against no. the Croc. They're going to run away. And this is ROTM. They have won the fight. It's cleaning up the kills now. Satchel oh, or Bounty oh, Bomb Comet misses. And the Q from Rise. The Rise is gold. And that will be the four kills made. ROTM are going to barrel down mid. They're going to secure most likely the inhibitor for their hard fought game. If they needed to keep Tai Chi alive, but not at the expense of everyone else. There, Tai Chi still didn't get to go into the fight and pump out the damage that we Wait. needed to see come through. Wait, and that really, really can hurts. They, can they end? No. But, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. They might. If they kill here, they might be able to. That's going to be a jump oh, in. This no. could be the, This could be disaster for Tiger Cubs. The Cubs might be cold right here. Yeah, Ziggs, he is getting the bombs. He is satcheling it in. He broke the towers. That's it. That's it. That's it. Return of the middle six are able to find the towers if they can hit the Nexus. All they have to do is hit the Nexus. They did. TGC are not unkillable. They are not undefeatable. Return of the middle six. Take Game number one here in the finals. Orbital, they just had to not die under the turret and they just needed to wait for th fire theft. They just pulled the trigger a little bit too early, possibly in Tai Chi. Uh, what, what a way to end the game for both these teams. First of all, we talk about Tiger Cubs and how they could have survived, but Re return. No, I'm going to say, it. I've been struggling with the name. I keep wanting to call them Revenge of the Middle Sticks. It's fair for me to say that now. They <laughs> definitely got their revenge, and they did it in style. Zadox just completely stomped Moody's. And I saw the Nidalee pick. We saw it. We were a bit concerned. We've seen Moody's on the Nidalee. Looks really good on it. Nope. Zadox has their number with this Hecarim here. I think going to next game, Tiger 
they're going to be much more respectful of this Hecarim. I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a ban come out because, sure, I mean, you can let it through and maybe you think you can handle it, but Zadox just could gank every single lane, did it so well as well. And unless you're going to pick all early lanes, it's just so risky to let that through for Zadox right now. Yeah, not just that, the level of aggression that they output, not even from the Zadox, it was x craze coming in out of nowhere, the yeah. flash over the wall to get those early kills and make it steamroll. I mean, that is something that they change on the fly from day one. So, very well done. We'll see if Tiger Cubs can recover here in this series. I mean, we know they can. We know that they have the ability to do so, and this series is not even close to over. Please stick around. Let's keep watching to see how game two will play out. We will be back in just a few. Dancing begins.
I didn't see that coming. And we are back after that. Ah, I, have, I have no other words for it because there was aggression. There was macro. There was literally everything you could have hoped for in a League of Legends match rolled into one. If that does not show it, I think it. we, we were only missing the steal, right? But Zadix was on the team that was winning. He couldn't steal it if his team already has that strength. So it was very, very good. But again, so well played. I'm excited to see what else they can bring. Oh, bro, I think the word you're looking for is a banger. That game <laughs> was a banger. It was beautiful to watch. I love it, and I'm loving to see what adaptations come out. We're talking about the Hecarim potentially being banned. The other thing we should probably talk about is also the Leona first pick, because Return of the Middle Six is still on the blue side. They still have first pick, and x Craze looks so clean on that Leona. Yeah, you died, but being clean for a tank support means your team gets out every time that you're in there. And we already see the bands, and actually no focus anywhere. These are same bands going through. Yeah. Tiger Cubs say, listen, it wasn't the draft. It wasn't anything special. We just played it wrong. That is exactly what the signals do. That they are that confident that they do not have to change anything. And yeah, ROTM, are gut this is the, again, this is confidence coming out of Tiger Cubs. I wouldn't say a salty run back. I'd say confidence out of Tiger Cubs for the time being. Yeah, and we have to look at their draft as well. For me to call something a Salty's run back, your draft has to be the same as well for the most part. And Return of the Middle Six, they don't feel a need to change anything, right? Like, they got exactly what they wanted. And mm -hmm. my biggest question for Tiger Cubs draft now is, are you going to pick the Nidalee again? Because I really feel like as good as Moody's is on it, when you're facing a team who is as good as you are, you cannot rely on Spears landing without some sort of assist. And there we go. Galio yep. being picked up. Camille still on the table, and that Cam Camille Galio combo very strong here. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, remember the Camille last time was picked up in round three. What are you substituting out here? This is probably the support Galio that was banned away in second phase. So picking it up early, ROTM are gonna have to deal with this fact now. Anytime they try and dive, the follow up is there. Maybe they take the Camille for themselves on the top side, um, and deny that factor. Right? This is this is the wrench, and they're going back to it. okay. Let's let's clear the air here. Me and RMC had a little bit of discussion off air, and I think it's very warranted. The Ziggs bottom lane did not look very good in laning phase. However, the reason that they won the game was because of the Ziggs. Yeah, so the, the, the disagreement we have is undoubtedly that Ziggs from uh, Farlight did a lot in the end game. But, I, but my argument is that if you had anybody else down there who wasn't dying that much, who wasn't getting one shot by Taichi on that Tristana, you wouldn't have gotten to that one in the end game. So we'll have to see how that goes. The Camille being denied by uh, Return of the Oh my Station. gosh. They pick it themselves. And I'm concerned because Renekton is supposed to counter Camille. Mm -hmm. And we already saw last game that didn't happen. So Pachi struggled into that matchup. Now you're on the Camille. They get the Renekton who's supposed to beat you. And they won the weak side of that matchup. So suddenly things are looking real dicey. Fire Theft can do exactly the same things that he did uh, on the Camille with the Renekton as well. You're very mobile, you dominate the lane, and you can split push. This is, I, I feel this is the salty run back of the top laners at least in that stance. And now we do get to see the bands coming out, double jungle bands. Remember, uh, keep it keeping it about the same. So uh, ROTM, that top lane is gonna swing either way, but I'm questioning about what you want to ban here. And, and again, the Elise coming out here, I think this is warranted. Again, I think this is warranted. Tiger Cubs, the Nidalee needed maybe a little bit more. And at least would have fit the bill. Early AP, early aggression. That would have actually synergized pretty well. I don't hear. Because the, the whole thing, the whole reason why I was surprised that they didn't ban, or they were harming the Nidalee ban was because they had the Renekton. Now Tiger Cubs has Renekton. We talked about Gank Assist. That is Gank Assist. That is your point and click CCJ. If you let the Nidalee through, you're basically sacrificing potentially Sopachi or whoever goes to top lane of that Camille. Oh, fiddle six. That that's a fiddles ban. Return of the middle six, banning the fiddle six, and leaving the Nidalee open for Tiger Cubs. I. It doesn't look like he. I am. Um, 
Well, here's the, here's the thing that we can say is because the Diana was left open, it is picked. However, Tiger Cubs, I have to say, huge respect for them. They banned away that Hecarim. That Hecarim, way too aggressive, way too easy to access, and they rightfully did, which I'm also surprised. ROTM, I feel, could have left the Ziggs for maybe a little bit later slot and still decided to take it instead of the Hecarim. So they, they definitely feel like the Hecarim wasn't important. It's Zadox himself that is going to be able to work it through. Now we take a look at the rest of the picks. Top lane, is that a Gwen jungle actually? It could be Gwen can jungle, or it could be Gwen mid as well, right? Uh, yeah. Depending on what the matchup is. And because you can still flex, uh, it, it's it's fine. My, my bigger question is what are they picking up last year? They're very, very squishy right now. So having a Nunu would be interesting. It wouldn't actually be that bad either with the Gwen and with the uh, Camille. Your, your gank as a Nunu is very strong. I think people don't see it often enough, so they forget that. Trundle being picked up. Okay, I like that as well. It's not quite as tanky, but you get to subjugate and weaken that Renekton, potentially the Galio as well. Uh, or if they want to pick another tank, it's going to be able to deal with that. The Pillar is a huge tool as well to be able to create choke points. If you combine that with the Ziggs, with the potential Solar Flare, and suddenly Tiger Cups are going to have a lot of problems advancing into Re Return of the Middle Six. What's crazy to me is the rise was available and with the azir here that is i, I want to say a beautiful counter pick number one great counter pick here you know the range in the mid lane is going to be short great pickup my concern is this back in game number one and thankfully uh thankfully to our lovely observers we were able to pull it back up for ourselves um in game number one the rise was uh p5 rotm they blind picked it that's all the option they had i we didn't get to point out how crucial firelight's ultimates were to helping reposition the team to give themselves a very nice chase potential. It was left open again, and this time they actually choose to go for the straight up aggressive answer instead of repositioning tactics. Now looking at Tiger Cubs composition without that repositioning tool, do you feel ROTM may be lacking in that sense, or do you still think that their ability to team fight will be just as strong? I think it's very different because now that you see the Galio, Renekton, and Diana coming out from Tiger Cubs, your worry isn't trying to engage into them anymore. Your concern is trying to kite back and disengage from them. Mm -hmm. Give yourself more favorable positioning. And that's why I like the trundle, the trundle pickup. The pillar is huge. These aren't blinks coming out from Tiger Clubs. These are jumps. They're, they're repositions. You still have to go through that pillar, through that slow as well. So I think the trundle pickup here, it's great. And on top of that, you already have the Camille, you have the Gwen. I don't know if necessarily uh, Zadox plays the, the Gwen jungle. Maybe they're not practiced on it. And if that's the case here, then it was always going to be a question of what jungler they pick up. Yeah, we'll see what they decide to place it in as well. But lanes have been matched up. Game number two is underway. And I mean, you hear it in our tones. You hear it in the way we look at this game. This is a big one. ROTM, we saw how quickly they got shut down before. It truly is the revenge of the middle six Tiger Cubs looking to become actual Tigers. This is something that they've been wanting. They looked great throughout the opening stages. But faltering on the final steps is not how they want to end this event so hopefully they can come back they can be stronger than ever and it seems like they have done it the compositions are set the teams are ready to go and hopefully our broadcast will do it justice we will be right back here in just a few
And we are back here taking a look at some wonderful, wonderful animal wildlife here. Again, we visited everyone. We're seeing how they're doing here on day number two, the snail enjoying the time. And we have a random yordle that somehow is as tall as the human models here on Summoner's Rift. So apparently they're giant fur balls. We're going to go ahead and move on through the rest of the rift. It looks like we are going to get the Camille in the mid lane. As uh, we had mentioned a little bit about this kind of... Uh, kind of strange setup. Camille mid, I think, was something that was popular uh, about a year ago, I want to say, but hasn't been played since. I hesitate to use the word popular. We saw her there, but not a ton. And the reason why we didn't really see too much Camille mid has a lot to do with the positioning of the walls as well. The hook shot is a huge part of Camille's kit. And unfortunately, the, the wall positioning means there's a lot of safe spots for enemy mid laners, not to mention the fact that the lane is short and Camille likes to be able to run down, chase down her opponents here. Uh, you don't get that opportunity in the mid lane. So we'll have to see how that works out. I do think we were talking about this and I was saying that I think this is a better lane assignment for the Gwen here. Uh, no matter who runs up to Renekton, it's going to be rough for them. But the Gwen trying to lane into the Azir is also going to be very, very rough. You don't have kill threat. You don't have ability to stick to the Azir. And Azir can just poke you down from afar. At least Camille can look to try and hookshot away or try and trade back if Azir ever steps a little too close to those walls. And I mean, the other one, the other matchup that we have not seen a whole lot of is Zadex pulling out a trundle. Drastically different than your normal, uh, I want to say, Kha'Zix or the Hecarim. A lot of speed, a lot of abilities to get in. This is a trundle that feels picked directly for the defensive. And kind of walk me through this jungle trundle that we are seeing here. Yeah, so J Jungle Trundle actually trades very, very well in extended fights here. And Diana's all kind of about the burst. So if you subjugate the Diana, it's not ideal, but you can still win those trades. And more importantly, it's about the pillar placement later on, being able to restrict the way that Tiger Krebs are looking to engage. Keep in mind the Trundle was picked before the Azir. So if you look at the rest of the composition, there's a lot of dive in here. And it's important to try and make sure that they don't get a comfortable dive in, that your Ziggs has a much better time trying to restrict them. Because we already saw last game, Firelight really struggled on the Ziggs to survive the initiation of the team fights. Yeah, surviving is one question, but here in the top side, we mentioned it before, Fire Theft on the Renekton, having a pretty nice time up there, getting some good chunks off, and Zadox going ahead and throwing down a visit towards that mid lane. He's at Riverside and knows that he is marked for potential camping. And we should note as well with the Trundle that the ganks are going to be vastly inferior to the Hecro. The last game we saw Zadox just taking over. Top lane though, oh, and kill territory. This, yeah, this oh, is close. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, trade back and forth. It was a limit test of limit tests, but so Pachi with the Ignite is allowed to pick up first blood. Okay, it feels like last game when we saw the Camille Renekton going really low, they both traded and survived. This time they don't. And first blood going over to Sapachi is going to feel so good. Both TP's coming up and Moody's is up there. So if they decide to sort of go for the all-in again here, it's not going to be a fair fight. 
No, it isn't. Surprisingly enough, we are going to see the dive in, possibly. I'm going to go for it. Zadox is here. A little bit of a stun, but he's out already. So now they're going to try and turn it around, but I'm not sure if they actually want to. x Crate going to get a little bit low. He's going to get taunted up. They are going to get jumped on Tai Chi. He's going to be happily napping that one up. The trade is there. Firelight picks up one. A little bit overextension, I feel, and a little bit too kill crazy. Everyone comes out with one. Sapachi gonna try as well. Oh, that's a stun up. They're gonna call the teleport in. And I think Sapachi's dead. He has no flash. One more attack is there. Moody's is able to secure. And Tiger Cubs showing off that they are willing to take these early aggressive trades. He's mid laners as well. Last game, we saw both of them rotating down very, very quickly early to get into fights. They're not afraid to blow teleports. Riverside, though, didn't get anything off that particular roam and might... Okay, no, he secures the Siege cannon. I was going to be like, if he misses that, it kind of sucks because he did commit a lot to this. x crazy again with the roam. He's going to try and go in, but the uh, Hex Tech Flash is not going to be long enough. Like Still, though, x Gray is still willing to go for those. This game is spicy, but the gold is a little bit rough. Already 700 gold up, which is mostly due to, I think, those CS numbers. A little extra camp in there. Maybe a few choice select CS picks. Again, melees, I think, yield five gold more than uh, their, uh, their caster counterparts. Uh, seven gold more. 14 gold seven for gold. casters, 21 for melees. Um, yeah, uh, don't ask why I know that. <laughs> that said, I want to know I the caster you use the name right there. <laughs> Return of the middle six, they didn't win the lanes either last time in terms of CS. It was more about the map pressure and what they could make happen. So rather than looking at the lane state, I'm more watching to see what they can do here because Zadox doesn't have their grin, because Zadox can't find those ganks. Can they set up for these objectives instead? If they're looking to try and scum to late game, I don't fancy their chances here. I feel like they'll fall too deep into a hole. So they need to make sure that they get some sort of control somewhere in one of the lanes early on. Indeed, indeed, early on is what we want. The opportunities are abound. Something we also forgot to point out. Triple teleport for ROTM. Firelight negating the heal, going straight for that teleport, making sure that he can get in. I think he actually did this last time as well. We didn't point yep. it out either. But again, triple teleport. This is something some people have harped on and is actually, uh, I feel, caused... Some concerns. Some people talk about how uh, one flash is very, very overused. But so is teleport, right? Seeing three members run teleport, always having the access, it, it feels a little bit different, I think. And, and it has to do with the champion you're picking as well, right? What else would a Ziggs run? If you're running Ignite, you're not in range for it. If you're running heal, well, you're probably dead. Like it, The heal is not going to save you. If you're going to get caught, you're so squishy, you're probably going to get blown up anyways. Same deal with exhaust and ignite. Uh, the range is just too short on exhaust. And then, so you're kind of left with maybe either barrier same issue with the heal and tp then becomes just the most valuable spell there because you're supposed to be safe we didn't see the tp come in too much from firelight for proactive play so it was mostly reactive and i suspect it's going to be much the same here this is not a tp you're using to try to influence the lane that's what your bomb is for it's more for you to just be able to get to lane faster you know shuffle lane base buy your items come back get in match with that way little tag in Kaplu's showing off that yes it's difficult but you can definitely reach your opponent. Riverside, though, throwing damage right back in Camille's face. Dragon is alive here. So it is the Cloud Dragon. We didn't get to point that out. It is now going to be alive. And I'm honestly hoping for another Infernal uh, Soul game. I think that is the most fun that we've seen thus far. I, I don't think we actually got the soul last game either, so... We did, we did. did, we, did okay, that, that's yeah. how little it mattered because of the way <laughs> the, the game stayed by that point there. And honestly, I'm not sure we'll see an early... Uh, oh, not, not last this time. Okay. okay it so, wasn't so last game, it, it was, I think, two games ago. It was in ah, the okay. second... Because it was the Olaf, right? The Olaf throwing axes and just popping off with the damages. Okay, yeah, that was the third place game. Yes, yeah, I, yes. I was like, am I starting to lose my memory? Very common, unfortunately, with me. So <laughs> that's not happening today just yet here. Uh, that's it. I, I don't know how early we're going to be able to see Dragon takes this game because the teams aren't going to be as confident. Without that Hecarim to find a quick pick here, you're 50-50 in a team fight. The Diana Azir is very strong together, and you tag on the ability to potentially drop a hero's entrance. That Moonfall is very, very key. And on the other hand, you've got Solar Flare, you've got Mega Inferno Bomb, you know, Hextech Ultimatum coming through as well. A lot of tools to isolate a target, to punish a group up as well, and force Tiger Cups to be very, very careful. So it's a lot about who can get the backs, who can get the vision. And right now, 
it's Tiger Cubs with the priority in lanes and with the ward in the pit. And you can see completely blank return of the middle six. Finally checking. Oh, <laughs> well, he that would have been really funny if X Grace went over the wall and went, uh oh. Yeah. Uh oh, because it <laughs> would have been met with three members. That would have been the most uh, pissed oh no moment ever. Yeah, I, I don't know if that's uh, the best idea to do as a Leona ever, just throwing a blind E over the wall when you've got no vision to anybody there. Uh, the bomb is much, much safer. Unfortunately, they found out too late. They're not going to be able to do anything about it. They'll give it over, and they'll be okay with that. It's not the end of the world. Yes, that means more Moonfalls here, but frankly, the, the 12 ability haste uh, is not going to be so key late. It's more in the early game where your cooldowns for your ultimates are very, very long. We do know it's yeah. going to be an Ocean Nyx, and it might not matter for Fire Theft because he's getting get. Yeah, Needlework is going to be thrown out. A little bit fast forward and a follow through Ooh. all over the wall. Pillar almost pinched him. And that's going to be the runaway. Fire Theft, unfortunately, still has to leave even further because Zadox is able to rotate. But dang, was the damage almost worth it there. Fire Theft getting a little bit of a treat. Fire Theft stealing life away from the Jaws of Death because he should have been dead by all mm -hmm. rights there. And that flash was beautiful to get over to escape. The fact that Zadox and Sobashi couldn't instantly flash the match because of the length of that wall was huge. You do lose Herald for it, but that's okay. You want yeah. Fire Theft to have more pressure. That's more important than taking down turrets and taking down plates. And I want to point out uh, something Zadox did, which I found really, really impressive. He tried to throw the pillar to actually, I think, extend the distance of the wall. Because if he had thrown it earlier, he would have actually gotten stuck. It, it's a very strange mechanic that rarely comes out, right? It, it's one of those freak situations that either, uh, I think Fire Theft would have been stuck between the two walls, or he wouldn't have gone over the wall. So Zadox trying to play it very, very close to heart. And he's making this jungle work, right? The ganks, we talked about it. The ganks are not gonna be the same as a Hecarim. Gotta make do it with what you have. And you don't have great gank assist from most of these lanes. Gwen has mm -hmm. no hard CC in her kit. So you kind of have to run at them as the Trundle unless she's using that needlework. Uh, Camille's hard CC also very conditional. I mean, you've got a Hexac ultimatum, but that's kind of risky. So much damage right now. I see the gank that they want to pull, but when your mid laner, when Riverside is chunking out Kuplu so hard, Kuplu's not going to step out and that gank's not going to happen. <laughs> I feel like they were waiting for Riverside to try and fake an in, and as soon as he tries to Emperor to divide, you know, the Hextech ultimating comes down, and then it's just like a, a complete domino effect that rolls through, right? Like, that's what I was kind of hoping to happen. Unfortunately, they can't pull it off. Bot lane Tai Chi goes ahead and does some Yordle on Yordle fighting. And this looks like the bot lane might be a pinch as Firelight has almost no mana available. That Ox and x rays are here to help out, so it's just a little bit of wave clear. And compared to game number one, this is almost a silent night. Like, this is almost no action on the field. It's not for lack of trying. We're seeing a lot of rotations. They're just not quite working out. And again, Moody's looks mid and Riverside it chunks out too quickly. Topside though, Fire Theft losing the trade here. The Gwen's starting to hit the point where Renekton's struggling to deal with her in the one view. Not just that, I mean, you can see the healing and that's gonna be on the other side of Fire Theft. He's gonna get the stun, oh. can't follow through, and that's gonna be, oh, 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 a dive over. So Pachi gets away with a little bit of his back As burned. He? Gwen is gonna run around. I, yeah, I don't okay. think he keep chasing. <laughs> that was close. That was super close. Riverside had tried and failed, but uh-oh. Oh, Kuplu's gonna look. Oh, That's no. a dime. Oh, the sweeper play no was so good. And the Hexic ultimated oh. to follow. He followed over the wall. I think Kuplu should get this sweep. Um, no. Yes, okay. That was a really <laughs> weird interaction because Kaplu flashed directly on top of River Sided. Still got the kill. ROTM evening out the kills. Yeah, no, Kuplu had to do that because of the soldiers, uh -oh. but Moody. Uh -oh. This is gonna be a trade off. Oh, the pillar! The pillar was so good, and Zadok is able to save his min laner. ROTM make it two on the board. Adaptive shielding from Camille was beautiful bait. The Moonfall did not do as much damage as expected. We already spoke about the fact Trundle wins most of these extended trades. If you don't burst out the target immediately, Zadox will be able to win out. And Return of the middle sticks. They're starting to find the small leads. We're worried that they're falling behind in their lanes here And we said that they need to make early action happen. It's coming through. We get a gold toggle Thank you very much. And you can see right now. It's just the bot lane falling behind 500 gold. Zigs don't care. Mage items cheaper. Top lane 
pretty much dead even. In the jungle, Zadox finding a lead once again with those kills, with those assists, and most importantly, in that farm. And the mid lane where Riverside was winning, it's dead even still. And Camille will scale up quite nicely as well. Azir does a lot of damage, but Camille's the better duelist. Not just that, as much as I hate to say it, Riverside doesn't look as comfortable on the Azir as maybe we would like, right? A lot of situations we see, we would see the Azir shuffle, right? Come out and be able to sweep someone into the enemy team. That flash as well, I'm not sure. I think you have to flash first and then ulti to get the Emperor's Divide behind you, right? Especially on a Sapachi that doesn't have flash, you would think that that would have landed and, and drawn the kill. So I, I'm wondering, and this is just speculation on my point, if this is not a comfortable pick for him, if this is just a champion that was said, hey, it helps the team a little bit in dividing and conquering uh, some of these team fights. So just go ahead, pick it up. Uh, you'll play a little bit weak side and the rest of the team will pick up the slack. Uh, well, oh. before we talk about that, let's talk about the fact that Dragon just <laughs> went down. And Tiger Cubs were struggling in the fights, but they have a lock on these objectives right now. It is going to be Inferno once again here, Orbital. And you know what? We're going to get the soul one of these days <laughs> in this particular match. Maybe it's this one here. Uh, and if Tiger Cubs gets that, then all their struggles in the early game don't matter whatsoever. The Infernal Soul is going to feel so good when you've got a Tristana, when you've got an Azir, when you can keep stacking that damage up. And it'll certainly help Fire Theft, because Fire Theft needs help right now. They're losing the 1v1. You pick the Renekton into a Gwen for the early game, but once you start getting, you know, one item, two item power spikes, that changes. So Pachi has not even picked up that Rift Maker yet. Well, no, actually, remember in this one, Fire Thread picked it up to try and counter the Camille, and then the Gwen came out second rotation. So technically, he is weak side. Uh, or not weak side, I should say. Strong side, just, I guess, ROTM's counter pick, if we want to say that. So that is going to be the weird way to put it in my uh, not so formal language. And top side! What? 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 We were just saying that he was winning, that Gwen was winning, and here it is. Mana not available. Nice little stun. And it was just a gl oh the dash out of a thousand cuts. Really, really well played. And this is how the matchup is supposed to go, Orbital. You need mm -hmm. to do that bot side though, a bit more action. And possibly going a little bit low again. The shots from the Tristana are actually doing a little bit more work. Firelight now going to eat a bit too much. And the solo player, the only thing to call the fight off. It's surprising. ROTM. I feel should have a decent time here on the bot side, and they will. They're going to go ahead and try and pressure up and get first hour of the game. Flash in X-rays. Going a little bit crazy, as that's going to be the Mega Inferno Bomb. Ooh. Are they going to get it? The Ignite is still ticking down. I don't think it's going to happen. Oh, no. as the shield is there, but they still got the kill. That was a teleport used as well. Fire Fest teleport got canceled from the top lane. That's going to be the pull, and there's the Emperor's Divide drawing Kaplu back into the tower range, and oh my gosh. All right, Riverside. Uh, I called and said that I might question your abilities. I take it back. I rescind everything I just said. <laughs> yeah, actually, going back to that point, I, I did want to point out that Riverside was going for the max range to Rima Shuffle there. And the flash did go first. I think they just miscalculated the range a little bit, and so Pachi was just a little bit further out. So that one was kind of a 50-50, and you take the shot because why not? You didn't think you'd need the out there. That, that right there is what we normally see from the streamer shuffle. It's the comfort coming through. And Harold now in their pocket. Tiger Cubs get every single neutral objective on the map so far. It's, it, it's such a oh. strong play for them here. And in the top side, Sapachi is getting a little bit low. There's a trade of one for one. Now they're going to oh, die. So this is going to be a trade one for one. But the follow-up damage might be a bit too much. They're going to try and turn it, but they can't. This damage is real. The Moonfall not oh. going to be enough. And the kill has been made. ROTM come out with a three for one fight to secure the top lane. And they've got Firelight here. That turret's not the healthiest either. Okay, no, they're going to walk away. If they kept the Trundle, if they kept the Camille up there, they can potentially burn this down. But they've got to go back mid. Taichi's threatening that mid lane turret. And as great as a, a turret taker as Ziggs is, Tristana can match. They actually take it anyways. Yeah, it's Ziggs. No one cares about that. Taichi <laughs> is not going to get run down because of the Trundle. It's just Zadok oh. messing with the opponents. And that's the Emperor's Divide used oh, as gosh. a defensive terrier. But it's not going to happen to fly back over the wall. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Kabloo's trying Doesn't to run. Matter. Zadok is <laughs> pissed. Zadok's the Trundle. The Trundle wallops people into oblivion. He is back to 4-0-4. Four, and, four, and ROTM are ahead. They are now 3k in the lead. Return of the middle six, loss to Tiger Cubs in group stages? 
JK, it's Xanox, it's the Troll King. It was all planned. They were just making a joke, and right now, they don't have an answer. I did not think the Trendle would be 4 0 and 4 at this point. Mm -hmm. Granted, it's not the same pace as the Hecarim, but still, he shouldn't be that far ahead. He has to run it, he has to walk at you, and he's not even building anything like uh, Turbo Chemtech. There's no Shirelius here. It's a Divine Sunderer Trundle, and it's still somehow finding its way into all of these fights in a timely fashion. I feel with the kills on Hecarim, it was necessary, right? A Hecarim we know is a little bit more squishy. They tailored it specifically for that. Excuse me. And the fact that he got the kills got him the gold to get the items. That's what made the Hecarim strong. In this sense, the kills are doing two things. One, getting the items, but two, letting Zadox hit that level 11 that much quicker. Having a level two subjugate means you steal so much more HP. You steal so much more of the stats and it gives you so much uh, capabilities to pseudo tank everything up. Now the mid lane is gonna be under fire. Oh, wow. One bomb. Firelight 100 is about to start dropping a major amount of pain. Where was the six last game? <laughs> last game, every time he looked at Farlight facing Taichi, it was Farlight getting chunked. Now, this is not a great situation for Return of the Middle Six. They don't have a great team fighting composition, and Tiger Cubs do. But they don't want to give up this dragon because it puts them at sole point here, and it's Fernhold. So it's, it's a bit of an odd, risky situation here, and they need to start poking down. But Farlight is the one they rotate into the mid lane. Yeah, and the dragon has been put in the box, but will slowly be taken out. He's gonna try Kaplu looking for the side lane shuffle. Not being able to make it work. It's going very low, down to about 1800. Who's gonna get it? We'll watch this fight. One more attack is there, and it's stolen. The fight's gonna break out. This is gonna be the big one. That's the uh, first divide. Gonna be cutting out two for two so far. Down into the back. Heck, the ultimate is there. Pataji gets out. One more attack is there, and they win it. Are you kidding me? ROTM, they take the dragon and they sweep the fight. It's only possibly left alive. Return of the middle six. They don't need fiddle. They just need friendship. They are winning this. <laughs> this is this is ridiculous. Possibly, possibly he's dancing all day long. As as uh, that is Kaplu pushing down that bottom lane tower. Tiger Cubs are starting to lose control of this game. It's huge because you deny Soul Point. And there were two separate fights going on there, Orbital. There was the one between the junglers, Zadox and Moody's, faced off in a 1v1 for that dragon. And Zadox won the smite fight. And then you had the rest of the fight, which was everybody else fighting Tiger Cubs here. And Sopachi Kuplu played that so well. Yes, Sopachi did go down, but it distracted them. It forced them all apart there. We saw the end of it. The fact that Taichi was not in position for anybody to help them. Riverside also on the other side. You want them kind of close enough that they can get the Empress Divide to protect both of them. That didn't happen. And now they're shoving up. That was a nice, easy, quick take with that Satchel Charge. Mid lane shouldn't be too much of a problem either. At this point, this is the all or nothing play. They're gonna go all the way in. Imagine Inferno Hong goes out, but the damage is done. Yes, they get the zigs, but they get one in return. And Taichi is out. Taichi has to leave the fight. Everyone's divided once again. Everyone's under the tower, but they get the Gales. Camille has gotten the uh, the Galio. Now goes down. Shastana Leona oh, does fall as well, but Gwen is gonna try to clean up fire. That's the only one alive. The pillar gets him right in. That's gonna be the thousand cuts, cutting him down to size. Would you know it? Oh, return to the middle six. Get an ace for three, and they're going to shove to break the base of Tiger Cubs. I understand the Emperor's Divide trying to push them back into the turrets, but at that point, you want them out of the turrets. You want to protect Tai Chi. And unfortunately, Zadox just said, thank you. That was just a boost to help me get closer to you, or Tristana. And Zadox don't care about no turrets. He's a Trundle who is incredibly fed, 8 0 and 7. He is in super tanky. He's going in. And there was another interaction I did not think about till I saw it. We talk of the, fa of the fact that Camille needs walls to really get the hook shot going. Ah. Zadox provides that wall. And it's just such a free initiate for this Camille right now. Tiger Cubs, they are struggling right now. That was the team fight under the own turret, but they need to be together. They need to play this right. And they need to get their front to back going. They're getting flanked, they're getting pulled apart. And when they're pulled apart, they're picked apart. Why honestly, uh, Zadox at 807, we said, we said that the Hecarim scaled a bit faster. This is about the same scaling path. Look at that gold right now. Evenly matched with Kaplu, who has 167, 168 uh, CS. This is ridiculous. This is Zadox completely in these two games. Feels like he has been the linchpin, the entire foundation 
for Return of the Middle Six. You look across the board, right? The highest is 8,500 in Tai Chi, who, uh, again, on a Tristana, we always say Tristanas need to be able to output damage, need to not be in the middle of the fight, and so far has consistently been found. TGC feel like they need somewhat of a miracle play if they want to start coming back in this game. Yeah. And it, it's not just Zadox either. It's Kuku right now, who's also super fed on the Camille. It, tai Chi is being threatened by Kuplu, and then Zadox is kind of cleaning up. But the issue is that Kuplu is so mobile in these fights right now that the Empress Divide is not really quite able to keep her away from diving that back line. Tai Chi, last Ooh. game as well, struggled when he had gold. And I don't know how you're going to play this from behind. Firelight has had much better positioning as well. Only dying once so far. And this sort of situation is what Ziggs was designed for. Siege a turret, poke them down, and then blow up the turret when they think they're safe. And not just that, I love the fact that he was able to pick up the Horizon Focus instead of maybe like a, another burn uh, item, right? Maybe a safety item like the Zanyas or whatever. It's just straight up more damage, right? That is that is yeah. the item you want. If you just want to throw down a single Q, decide that, hey, that person doesn't get to live and you're good to go. That also amplifies, I just want to point out, that amplifies his ultimate. So normally a Ziggs won't do too much. and. and uh, someone that I really respect and I follow uh, maybe a little bit too much on Twitter is uh, always playing ahead. Uh, I've been able to uh, watch his play a few times. He posted, I think, three clips of a Ziggs ultimate, I think only ranked two, destroying a team over and over again with Horizon Focus and a single myth. Like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. The damage is pretty disgusting. And Ziggs got a buff a couple of patches ago that increases the missile speed of that Mega Inferno Bomb as well. So it's harder to dodge out. It's just generally, su he's such a good pick, and that's why we've seen him come back into play, especially in that bot lane position where you can farm up. Because Ziggs is a bit of an exception to mages, where levels are nice, yeah, sure, but gold's more important to get those items. Yep. Return of the middle dragon. sticks. Yeah, pick up their second Drake once again. And normally, okay, like, it, it's not so much about the soul now, it's just the straight dra uh, infernal stacking that you're getting. Each yeah. and every one of those is increasing that damage that we we're talking about. That's a percentage modifier, but if it's 4%, you add that to the fact that you've got, you know, now Horizon Focus, which is also a percent modifier, and they stack multiplicatively. You know what feels bad is it, it feel. Oh, never mind. Okay, down goes Apache. Yeah, so Apache's dead, unfortunately. <laughs> two six to two seven. Try, trying his best, honestly, trying his best to contain. And I mean, at this point, if that means Kuplu gets a little bit more pushing power, that's great. I just want to say it feels bad for one side to get two dragons or, or all four dragons and have two dragons of infernal stacked up for the soul right what feels even worse is to watch a team stack four infernal drakes and pick up the soul afterwards you're just like come on man yeah and i i don't know if we'll go that long right now here orbital it, it, we are seeing a bit of a, a slower paced game a more measured game but make no mistake return of the middle sticks every time they shove they're getting a lot of damage on these turrets it's just a matter of time if they just keep sieging this up i think they're just playing it careful they're spending their gold and they're getting ready for this baron if they get the baron here tiger cubs are almost forced to fight outside their base or immediately upon the siege because they get outranged by the Ziggs folk. They get outranged by those uh, siege cannons as well. And we spoke about the fact that, hey, you know, Tristana outranges Ziggs kind of in terms of autos, not in terms of spells. Same problem with Azir. You don't outrange that Ziggs and you can't wave for the rest of the Azir. You just cannot give it a shot. We do see the Nasher Sooth coming out for him. And I want to see if he is going to go defensive or if he's going to go a little bit more damage. Normally, if you are even, uh, a Ravanon's death cap would actually be in order at a certain time, I think. And so to wait and see what the what the Azir tries to do is going to be in question. But now we see a little bit of a collapse coming out, possibly. It's unfortunately going to fall here. The Satchel draws him right back. But it's going to be the teleport being called in. And Hexic Ultimate and Tai Chi is going to get cut down. And this, honestly, this might be it. This is looking yeah. like the flies are dropping. Return oh, no. of the middle six. Yeah, that's a shove. Emperor's Divide is out. Oh, <laughs> a nice shuffle out. But that's going to be the damage. He is going to survive. But at the cost of fire, that's life. This oh. is looking like it. No, okay, they do get the kill. Pillar doesn't drop. Riverside it back in, but that's still, that is three. Ziggs is still alive. RMC, Tiger Cubs, we're looking like the favorites moving into this. Okay, oh. never mind. Fire theft. <laughs> It'll have something to say. He is going to live. 
I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything about possibly ending the game. Oh my They're going to try and turn it around. They TP save well. their base. They're going to keep running. If they find the few last kills that they can find Zadox here, they will be able to turn for Baron. And the best. They're running away. Possibly wants to keep chasing. He doesn't want to stop, but they're forced to. It's close. Uh, that, that was very, very close to game over for TGC. That, yeah, I, I don't blame you for almost calling it there, but Riverside and Fire Theft mounted a monstrous defense. They keep it alive. And now this is a desperation bear. Make no mistake here. TP coming in. Kuklu's already here. And Zadox, he's tagging. He can walk. He can wade into that if he has to. Spin is up. Subjugation is available. You need to see the Baron. It's dropped down to about 3k. They're going to get the taunt. They're going to stoke it away. And it's going to go down. Okay, so it is down. Zadox needs to run. If he wants to stay alive, Dragon in a minute 30. He's good. Sapachi. So a bit of action they can still do it if they get at least one baron off of at least one member primarily fire theft the split pusher that would actually be oh, huge but they turn it around oh no he went too deep and they're gonna draw it out shut down four fire that needle work through the entirety of the oh, team oh, oh, oh. Gwen, Gwen, what are you doing that is monstrous damage and that is a trade like no that is a stall the chief has been interrupted i'm losing my voice right now taichi Running for the hill, Zadox needs one auto attack. Bomb goes out, the side steps are real, but it is not enough. The Baron was secured for return of the middle six. Win the fight. That is the ace. That is the ace at 29 minutes. Teleport in, Firelight is going to end it on his own. The lone Ziggs wanting this series to be over. Return of the middle six are going to go ahead, win a monstrous team fight. They will put their seal of approval and with death on their minds tiger cup watch their nexus fall and the series will go so the second seed rotm two to zero orbital everybody loves an underdog story this wasn't it return of the middle six they weren't underdogs does that <laughs> look like an underdog to you two oh and they played that so so well and so pachi all game long on this gwen was struggling a bit. Oh, I love to see the, sh the good sportsmanship there between the two teams. And Zadok's pillar. I I've got to mention that because that last interrupt, it happened a couple of times throughout the game. We kind of didn't mention it, but that last one has to be mentioned because if yes. that interrupt doesn't come through, things get dragged out. They probably still win. They probably still push, but things get dicey. And we saw uh, the side of Tiger Cubs fend off seemingly inevitable pushes before. So huge props to Zadox. Definitely the MVP of this series, man. Just so so good. I don't think he died a single time that match. I'm I'm literally shaking here in my booth over here. That game, I it, it was it was amazing to watch. It was one that I really really agree with because make no mm -hmm. mistake, Tiger Cub in that final series might have looked a bit shaky. That is not the case. These are guys that were well worn in the heat of battle. These are guys that very rightly look like they were going to come out the victors. Just return of the middle six, put it all on the line, came out with some phenomenal picks, some amazing coordination, the champions that we had not seen before and really took them by surprise. So again, congratulations to both of these teams. Tiger Cubs land in second, return of the middle six, go ahead and take first place here at the <clears throat> Unified Esports Association land. So again, we will go ahead and go to a quick break. I think we will have an interview with the winners of Return of... Uh, and actually, I heard in my ears that we are actually getting Zadox, the man that we have named the MVP, will be coming out to give his thoughts on that series. So thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you in just a few short minutes.
Hello, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I am JT Displays, along with me, the clear MVP of that series. We got Zadox the Jungler here. Uh, first first game there, of course, you came out with a very dominant Hecarim play here, but this second game was sealed the victory here for you. Go with a, some would say, unorthodox uh, trundle there. Um, tell me how, how you ended up, uh, you know, not necessarily being the policeman, but definitely bonking people and sending them to jail. Um, we were in that position just because, I guess, just how the draft went. They were really focusing on what I wanted to play, and I knew I wanted to pick something that's going to counter an AP champion. So before this event, I had practiced plenty of stuff going into it, and Trundle happened to be one of the picks. And obviously, Hecarim was one of the other ones, but they had banned it. So Trundle was kind of like one of the picks that I kind of fell off on, and it worked out really well. Our team practiced, and everybody just beasted out. Yeah, and you guys seem to really enjoy that uh, that that Ziggs bot lane, that that APC down there. That seemed to work pretty well for you, especially in game number one for sure. Yeah, it's it's a great pick. Um, Firelight's just a beast on it. He called it before the event. He said, "Hey, one thing we could always try out is Ziggs mid, Ziggs bot. Um, it's something that could be weak sided, so we don't have to put any resources into it, and it does a lot on like a lot of plays for a team like us who's relatively new. Like we only started playing together yesterday. Mm -hmm. Um, it kind of." covers that's like a band-aid fix for a lot of macro issues because you can kill towers very easily and so that's kind of how we did everything was we just did band-aid fixes because we have to catch up to everybody else in terms of cohesion so band-aid fixes with comms band-aid fixes with picks is basically how we did that hey that's big brain play so that, that's why you guys are the champions i mean for sure this was definitely a tough one for you because uh the uh, tiger cubs they had beaten you previously and you guys are able to come back rally in this championship match to, to secure that victory overall is that right um, now, with that as well, how was this experience for you? Have you ever been, uh, are you local here to Kansas City? No, I'm from actually from Iowa. Iowa, all right, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the uh, Buckeye State, right? No, no, no. Ohio's. But, yeah, yeah, it, it, listen, listen, listen. Corn State. Corn State, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, the, the one that's next to, to Omaha, for sure. <laughs> we are devolving here into <laughs> chaos and madness, but that's all right. Um, so, uh, welcome to Kansas City. Uh, how, how is your experience here? at Sporting Park at Children's Mercy Park here with Sporting KC. Um, it's been amazing, actually. A lot of people that were here are people I've met online before. Everybody's been really welcoming. Um, I mean, it's been overall just a great experience. Like, I, I feel like every single time I had a question, it was answered immediately in terms of all the staff members here and how it was run. If there's ever a technical issue, they were there right away. Um, I think everything kind of flowed really smoothly. Um, I felt comfortable, which sometimes that can be a problem, you know, when you go to some land events. But I think overall, everything was just a great experience. It, it looks amazing, obviously. And just overall, it was just very comforting, very enjoyable. Awesome. Are you guys planning to like, you know, stick together as a team moving forward at all? I mean, like, obviously, walking home with some cashy money, that's always got to feel good, right? Well, maybe. It definitely has to depend on the land because I'm currently, I'm playing in my own team. Okay. But um, definitely, uh, I've played with uh firelight on past teams uh before we've been to another lane together and so basically i mean if he's down to do anything i'm down to do anything so maybe I love to hear it love to hear it. and of course you know we have we do have land coming up up in nebraska you know so it's a little bit closer to iowa there you know maybe less less of a four hour drive more of like a two and a half type hour drive there so uh hopefully something that you can be in but uh i want to say zadox thank you so much for hanging out with us here in, with this interview and you go ahead and uh, celebrate with the rest of your teammates man thank you appreciate it all right, yeah, there we go. And folks, there we go. <laughs> there we go. As we uh, bring it all back in, folks, as we started here yesterday on this stream in this same room, in the same air conditioning. You know, it's, it's been a great, great experience here. But here we are once again. As we start, so we end. We're going to bring back in Orbital. We've got Kento. Uh, unfortunately, Airborne had other duties to attend to, but we appreciate him being with us here today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us here on Twitch.tv slash UEA Live. We'll be back again at some point in the future. Do we know when now? I mean, like, I'm taking a vacation after this, so, like, I'm, like, gone for, like, two weeks. So, But after this, you know, we will all, we will all see all of us at some point in the future. I, it's, it's my psychic vision. We're all going to be seen um, and, and heard and, and validated. And what I'm saying is, I hope you guys had as much fun as we're having here. It's good to have a LAN event. It's so great to be back together in person again after the trials and tribulations uh, of the past year. So thank you so much for being with us. And I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your weekend. For Kendo Slice and for Orbital, this is JT Displays signing off. Good night.